So Oklahoma taking care of business. Now it's Texas's turn before the clash next week. Welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia. 73 degrees, clear skies. 11th ranked Texas and West Virginia. As we welcome you to the first Saturday in October. Hi, everybody. Steve Levy along with Brian Greasy. We'll get to Todd and Molly shortly. It's the day of the year here for the game of the year. Texas has to be very careful not to look forward to next week or even the college football playoff. They need to be focused on the here and now, Greasy. There's no question. This is a tough place to play. We know what happened a year ago. West Virginia beat them 42-41. So I don't think you're going to get a Texas team that's going to sleepwalk through this game at all. Uh, the people here are rather ready. They're very happy about the 3.30 local start. Start homecoming, strike the stadium as you can see. And this has all the makings of an excellent afternoon of college football. And we are underway. Sam James on the return. And he will set West Virginia up at the 25 yard line. Austin Kendall, his background as a backup is rather fascinating. He was at Oklahoma with Baker Mayfield, sat behind Baker for a couple of years, and Kyler Murray. Okay, Austin sat behind them. Then Murray leave, you figure, all right, this is Kendall's turn, except look out for the old transfer portal trick. Here's Jalen Hurts. All of that, and Austin Kendall, welcome to Morgantown, West Virginia. <laughs> it's been quite a ride for Austin Kendall. He's always wanted to play, as you mentioned, against Texas. He's going to get his opportunity today. On first down, Kendall comes out throwing. Able to complete to Giovanni Haskins, and that is the first reception of the season for the tight end. It's good for six. On second and four, off the play fake. Kendall to throw. It's Sam James who was spun around back to the line of scrimmage as the aforementioned Todd McShay chimes in. Todd. Well, Steve, Kendall's really struggled throwing the ball vertically. He's only completed 22% of his throws that have gone beyond 20 yards. Now, he's going to have to attack today, and they've got to be able to trust those wide receivers because this secondary for Texas is beat up. They're giving up more than just about every team in terms of pass yards in the country, 124th in the FBS, and they're missing four key contributors you see here in Josh Thompson, Jalen Green, Caden Stearns, and Marvian Overshown. So it's going to be a big challenge for Texas in secondary. Stearns, the top tackler for Texas. A helmet comes flying off and a body goes flying. And so does a flag. T.J. Simmons on the receiving end took a shot from B.J. Foster. Wow, dangerous play there, right? The, the helmet came off. I don't think it was intentional that they ripped the helmet off, just trying to get him on the ground. And then B.J. Foster took at least two and a half steps, came up and hit the receiver. And with all the injuries in the secondary, Foster is a player who is just returning to the Texas defense. Brad Van Vark, our referee today. This is absolutely the right call. You know, B.J. Foster has to understand and know the rules. Once the helmet comes off, that play is dead right there. You see he comes in and takes another two steps for a 15-yard penalty. Good start for West Virginia now right at midfield. Looks like Austin Kendall with a couple of completions early. Uh, get him in a rhythm. Get your passing game going. And Giovanni Haskins, as you mentioned, a tight end. And begin to distribute the ball around. At midfield. Kendall to throw. Flag comes in. Going for Sam James. Deshaun Jamison on the coverage. We'll check that marker. saw that left hand for Deshaun Jameson kind of full on the jersey of James. He was in great position, really didn't need to tag on him, but that's what's going to happen with Texas. There's so much youth in the secondary, especially at the corner position, you're going to have some of those calls. 
from the 44 of the Longhorns. Jamison gets the start, as Todd mentioned, without Jalen Green out there, without Josh Thompson. Uh, he's going to play a bunch as well as Kobe Boyce in this game. Kendall refuses to hand off. He'll throw for it down the sideline, and he's caught. Sam James, touchdown, West Virginia. It's 44 for the score. Great effort on the end of this play. Let's get this ball, touches the ground. He gets his hands under it. That I is think that's close, a good catch. man. And again, as you point out, Greece, the ball can touch the ground as long as you maintain control, and that does not help you secure the and football. It, and it's important that the ruling on the field was a touchdown and not an incompletion, so you've got to have that conclusive evidence to overturn that. The previous play and the ruling of a touchdown on the field is under further review. We talked with Austin Kendall coming into this game and Neil Brown, their head coach, that when they had the opportunity, they had to take shots downfield. The weakness of Texas' defense, at least right now with all the injuries, is this secondary. And Todd mentioned it. You have to attack when you have the chance. You see the defender, B.J. Foster, in position, never found the ball. Sam James did a great job getting his hands under it. That ball did touch the ground, but it didn't help him make that catch. I think that's a touchdown. James, the leading receiver for the Mountaineers in receptions and catches and their yardage this season. What a catch going vertical and beating B.J. Foster, who might have been thinking about a previous flag. West Virginia runs four plays on offense, all four passing plays, and aided by the two penalties exactly the way that Neil Brown wanted to start this football game. Take advantage of your home crowd. Get him into the football game. Throw the ball with Austin Kendall. Get your best receiver into the game in Sam James. After reviewing his play, the ruling on the field stands as called. to imagine a better start on a picturesque day here in Morgantown. Evan Staley, the junior, is on for the extra point. Perfect on the season. 11 for 11. And West Virginia draws first blood. Mountaineers have had the Longhorns number winning three of the previous four matchups successful at DKR. Now we're going to find out about these Texas Longhorns. They have not been out of the state of Texas. They played three home games and a game at NRG Stadium, which was basically a home game for Tom Herman. And he wanted to know, how is his team going to respond going on the road in a hostile environment? And now they've taken the first punch. Speaking of Coach Herman, down to Molly, who spoke with him just moments ago. Yeah, that's right. Coach Herman said, grip it and rip it. That's what he said to Sam Ellinger right before he took the field. He wants him to be aggressive, use his hostile environment is motivation and Herman said that Ellinger is at his best when an entire stadium is against him but he's concerned about his younger players getting too emotional he told them none of these fans can come out of the stands and play you when you're in someone else's house you don't knock on the door you don't ask permission you break that door down Steve big start for West Virginia we'll see how Texas responds after a bumpy landing here in Morgantown yesterday start here. We'll see Texas' offense and Sam Ellinger was a product of Westlake High School. Same high school that produced Drew Brees. What makes Sam so special is not only his ability to throw the football accurately and effectively and efficiently, um, also his ability to run. He's one of the toughest runners in all of college football. But beyond that, uh, his character, his leadership ability, he has those Longhorns playing great football. They believe in him. They, can, they believe they can win every game as they should with him as their leader. Uh, thanks to Drew Brees, who's got some spare time on his hands lately. How good are the Saints playing with Teddy Bridgewater? 
Sam Ellinger on first down. He'll give it off to Keontae Ingram. Nothing doing there. It's a loss. It's Darius Stills. For a loss of five. Boy, this West Virginia offense came out firing, and now it's Darius Stills, the nose guard, who's known for his quickness off the ball. That's his best trait on play number one. Is in the backfield for a talk of loss. Second and 16. Quick out of the flat to Ingram, the back. He's out to the 23 for a gain of three. Todd, we're going to have to keep an eye on these Stills brothers all day long. 56, Darius Stills, you just saw him make the play, the nose tackle, the quick first step, and the ability to disrupt up the middle. And then his brother, Dante Stills, who's even a better player, I think, we're at number 55. He's the three technique who penetrates and is the best pass rusher of this group. They're the best two players on this West Virginia defense. Their line is meet me there. Beat me there. That means in the backfield, trying to find Sam Ellinger this afternoon. Here's third and 13. Pocket breaks down. Ellinger to take off and run for it. He's got the first down, lowers the shoulder, and gets some more. Out to the 40-yard line. Gain of 17 for Sam Ellinger. Well, Drew Brees just mentioned it, right? He's been throwing the ball much better, but this is what Sam Ellinger has always been able to do use his feet and be physical and finishing runs in the secondary. Texas converting on nearly 60% on third down, second best in the country, behind only Air Force coming into play today. Elliott with all sorts of time. Take a deep shot, middle of the field. And a lot of traffic. No flags. Brandon Eagle is the intended target. Josh Norwood is there. Uh, Josh Norwood playing that deep free safety position. Was not fooled. Had the speed to get back in position. And incidental contact. Because Norwood looked back for the football, they're not going to call him for incidental contact. A delay a game because it did not come from the back judge. It came from the headlines. I think Derek Kerstetter knew that the, the clock was ticking down. Sometimes those linemen will look up at the play clock and they're like, they know that you got to snap the football. But that one there was on, on Ellen. You got to get the play called, then snap to get going. Three penalties already against Texas for 26 yards. Here's Ingram into the pile. That's not going to get a first down. Pick up a two on the play. It'll be third and long. Then Darius Cowan makes the stop. Along with Josh Chandler, Cowan making his West Virginia debut. position because if he's not that ball goes right into the hands of Josh Norwood and why wouldn't he trust Devin Duvernay he's got more balls than any receiver in college football this year. no Colin Johnson for Texas we, he is dressed we do not expect to see him it would be a different story if the opponent was Oklahoma today for example it's West Virginia on first down and 10 Ellinger to throw deep shot and it is knocked away Brandon Eagles the big target running with Keith Washington able to break it up. Well, Keith Washington has been tested now twice in this opening drive with deep shots to Brennan Eagles, and he's in better position than Eagles even. You could almost argue that Eagles should have been flagged for pass interference coming over the back of Washington. Both teams are coming out with the same mentality. They're attacking these secondaries. Both groups have suffered injuries. They've struggled covering the deep ball, and with a guy like Eagles, who's 6'4", 225, why not take a shot? 
Try the ground game to England. Three on the play. Third down. Keith Washington made the stop there, along with Ty Keith Smith. West Virginia really relies on their two corners. Washington and Akeem Bailey, they have played virtually every snap this season. Last time, third down situation, Texas. Ellinger's feet killed West Virginia. You got to cover the, the receivers, but you also have to account for Ellinger. Mountaineers only rushed three last time as well. See if they bring a little more pressure. And this is the spy on Ellinger right here. Rushing three again. Ellinger has all sorts of time, and it is caught. Kubernet. Another first down, gain of 10 on the play. Right off the bat, Steve, you see what I what I think is the biggest change in Sam Ellinger from last year to this year. It's just progression. Watch his head. He's looking right, not there. Then he comes back over the middle of the field, shows patience, finds the open receiver. If you give him time, he's not just going to bail out of there with his legs. He's also going to beat you with his arm this year. Duvernay among the leaders across the country in third down receptions. There's one there. Tenth play of the drive upcoming. Sean Johnson on first down to lead forward for a couple. One Darius Quells makes a stop. And Vic Conan told us, the defensive coordinator from West Virginia, that they're going to have to cheat a little bit against the run. They know that Texas does not want to run Sam Ellinger on a lot of designed runs. He only has 13 designed runs this year compared to 36 at the same point a year ago. So they're not going to worry about the option as much, and they're going to focus on the running back when they go to that zone read type look. McShay, stop reading my notes, will you? You got it, bud. <laughs> Stay out of my stat package. Second and eight. West Virginia defense comes up big with Ruben Jones. No game. Uh, give credit to Vic Coning. He's got a couple of little wrinkles. You know, he's not, his defensive line is not as big as the Texas offensive line, so he's got to move those guys around. So, yes, the Stills brothers are going to have an impact, but Ruben Jones and Quandarius Qualls both have to affect the run game. This drive has been based on third down conversions by Texas. Trailing early, 7 0. Sold out crowd in Morgantown on third and nine. Pass is caught. We'll see where they mark the forward progress. When Duvernay caught that ball, he had the necessary yardage and went back. They will give him the first down. It's a gain of nine. And Duvernay again on third down. Good tempo here for Texas now. On the ground, Johnson. The former quarterback turned running back, stopped by Dylan Tonkery for West Virginia. Well, you got to think that Vic Konings now on third down in particular going to have to start double teaming Duvernay. Why not, right? He's third three times in this drive, he's been targeted, and he's, he's beaten man-to-man -man coverage. He's beaten zone. I think it's time that you have to double him. Could we rush a fourth player, too? Is that possible? A little pressure? Well, send somebody. Always. Where's the kitty cat? Second and seven. The West Virginia 21. Here comes some pressure. Rushing four this time. Ellinger on the run. And couldn't settle down and find Cade Brewer. And it's fourth down. Third down, a big departure. So now's the opportunity, right? Find Devin Duvernay. He lines up typically in the slot and get a double team. The problem with that is then you're going to leave this really young secondary at the safety positions in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Texas has already converted. Third and 13, third and 13, third and seven, third and nine. There's third and seven now. And he's one-on-one -on -one right now with Norwood right across from him. That's a mismatch in favor of Texas. That's Duvernay in the slot. Moved inside this season. That's paying off. Ellinger, a little pump. Wanted to go to Duvernay, and he's dropped for a loss. It's Qualls. Brings him down. Well, they didn't double-team him initially, but they did drop the linebacker right underneath. Right when Sam wants to throw the ball, there is your linebacker. That's the double-team. Josh Chandler underneath of Duvernay, and you get the sack. Cameron Dicker. A 42-yard field goal attempt. He's four or five on the season. On the way, and no good. Missed it to the left. And it's all going right early on for the home team. Snap and play 
he's good. Just pushed it to the left. Still 7-0, West Virginia. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. Both Texas and West Virginia coming off buys. When we last saw the Mountaineers in action, back on the 21st, one at Kansas, 29-24. Texas had an old-fashioned shootout at home against Oklahoma State, winning 36-30 off the missed field goal. West Virginia comes out firing, and it's intercepted. Kendall is picked off by Deli Adeoye. And there's your first turnover of the game. You want to be aggressive. You want to push the ball down the field. Your quarterback's feeling it. Has a nice touchdown pass on the first drive, but you force this one right when he goes to throw it. He's trying to fit it right behind that linebacker, and that's just too tight, especially in your own end of the field, to take that risk. Austin Kimbrough hasn't played a whole lot of football, right? This is his first opportunity. He wants to make a statement against Texas, but he makes a mistake. West Virginia refuses to run the football. They have yet to rush today. Five offensive snaps, and they put it in the air every time. That time it's picked off. Chance for Texas to capitalize on the turnover. As they start at the 27 of West Virginia. Deontay Ingram is set back. Ingram will rush right up the middle. Halfway towards another first down. Keontae Ingram is a heck of a football player. And he's, he's brought some balance to this Texas offense. Obviously, Sam Ellinger is going to get a lion's share of the carries in short yardage goal line situations. But out in the field, it really focused on Ingram this year. Second out of five. Ellinger to throw for it. And more. End zone caught. Touchdown. Malcolm Epps went up and got it. He boxed out the defender for West Virginia. That was Nick Troy Fortune, the uh, corner, who's a true freshman. A little bit of hands. That's, that's not pass interference there on Epps. That's just a good note call. But, you know, why not take a shot with Epps? His size at 6'6", 245 pounds against Nick Troy Fortune, who's a true freshman at six feet. Here's Dicker. Off the missed field goal attempt. He's a perfect 21 for 21 on the season extra points. And there are zeros on the play clock. Delay a game on a kick and ten. Five yards penalty. Five. When you talk about West Virginia, they come out, they get all the momentum, they get the, the, the big play on offense, they score the touchdown, they get a stop on defense, and if you're Neil Brown, your quarterback goes back out there with the first pass of that second series and takes a risk that he didn't need to, but that's where West Virginia is right now. It's not consistent. It's up and down, and when you make mistakes like that, Texas is going to make you pay. Pushing back five yards. Dicker's extra point on the way and good. 5.52 left here in the first quarter. Texas makes West Virginia pay for the turnover. College football on ABC is brought to you by Dollar General. Save time, save money every day on tailgate favorites from General Mills and Pillsbury. Make the most of family time with Pillsbury. Did you schedule your homecoming with Texas in town? Yeah, not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> right? Really want to get that kind of attention? Hey, Florida's doing it with Auburn. Yeah. Same, same kind of deal. Maybe that's a, a new trend. Parade held last night from downtown Morgantown. Taco Bell celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Live Ma Student Section of the Year. The West Virginia Mountaineer Student Section already on the national watch list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete or get the committee's attention by using the hashtag Live Moss Student Section Contest. I love the stripe out yes. here today. It's really cool looking. Very cool. Usually you have your homecoming opponent is somebody with a north, south, east, or west of it. Texas. Here's Sam James. Had a nice return earlier. Has another nice return. He is running over people. Out to the 39-yard line. Blasted Dicker, the kicker. As we send it back to Cassidy Hubbard for the first time.
Thanks, Steve. This Big Play Studio update is brought to you by CarMax to the Swamp. First possession for Florida. Kyle Trask to Freddie Swain. Nice grab, then finds the gap and dusts everybody for the 64-yard score. Gators up 7-3 on Auburn. Oklahoma, Kansas finished up over on ESPNU. Carter Stanley to Steven Robinson. The Sooners would win that one 45-10. Steve, Brian Todd, back to you. All right, Cassidy, thank you. So that was a similar sort of trap game for Oklahoma. Had the focus, no problem there with Kansas. Well, Kansas had a 7-0 lead in that game. Got a stop at the play here. That was a 30-yard return for Sam James. They're going to look at the end of the play. And again, that's Dicker, which just happens to rhyme with kicker. And Dicker lowers his helmet. Well, that's that's a scary situation for Dicker. Obviously, he doesn't make a whole lot of tackles, doesn't know how to form tackle, and he lowers his head. That's very dangerous. But they might be looking at the crown of the helmet on Dicker, the kicker. So that's that, and that's material, obviously, for Texas because if they throw him out of the game for targeting right here, then so obviously it's your second kicker. That, so, that would change the complexion of everything. But by the definition of the rule, right, he lowers his head and uses the crown of the helmet to hit the uh, the runner, which by definition is target. Obviously, I don't think it was intentional, but it just was poor form by a kicker trying to make a tackle. And again, I think it's important that, that everybody realize that these rules are for the protection of the tackler much more so than, than the runner, and that was a dangerous situation for Cameron Dicker to put his neck in there like that. He definitely got the worst of that. Chris Nagar is the backup kicker, the junior from Arlington, Texas. Here we After go. After review, there is no foul for targeting. First down, left is in. Can you get Reg Rogers on the horn, please? <laughs> <laughs> He's texting us as we speak, Rogers Redding. I, I, you know, I was wondering, that, that could have been history. Do you think a, a kicker has been ejected from a game for targeting? I, I don't know. I, I find it highly <laughs> doubtful. <laughs> don't believe we've seen that. I tell you what, though, uh, Tom Herman just exhaled. Wow. Interesting start to this one in Morgantown. And again, West Virginia refuses to run the football. They pass it to Alex Sinkfield out of the backfield. It's a gain of two. Brandon Jones makes the stop. <laughs> Neil Brown was named head coach of West Virginia back on the 5th of January, this being the 5th of October. I did the math for you, that's nine months. You could make the argument his era really starts here today at home. There's no question. I mean, they, they're three and one, and, and they had an ugly loss at Mizzou, uh, but they didn't play very well. But they come back, and they, they've beaten some good teams. They beat NC State uh, in a tight ball, and then last week they beat Kansas. So three and one's a pretty good start. Texas on the blitz, picked up, and a crushing hit. B.J. Foster, he may have hurt himself. That was Kennedy McCoy out of the backfield. Yeah, you see, he's hitting, he's hitting the top of his neck there. That's normally when they get a stinger. When you get a stinger, that's what you feel tingling in the top of your neck, and that's exactly why they don't want these guys lowering their head in these situations. And again, Foster is just returning from injury. Personal foul, targeting, defense, We're going to take a couple looks at it. The injury to Foster had been his hamstring. This potentially is much more serious. Well, out. He's been out with a hamstring since the LSU game. And come back and take a look at this. He lowers that head. And this is material because Texas already playing without four players in their secondary. Welcome back to Morgantown. Take a look at B.J. Foster's helmet. See how his helmet goes down, and that's the first thing that hits the receiver. Very dangerous situation for him. He comes up with a, with a stinger. The question is, did he have his face mask up? Was his head up enough? Because he didn't hit in the head or neck area, so it would have to be a crown of the helmet foul. After we do, there is no foul for targeting. Third down. 
And I think that that's a situation there where you're not hitting in the head or neck area so you're hitting the body and the only question really is is he using the crown of his helmet. I think they they felt like enough of the face mask was up that could have gone either way. Foster is in the uh, injury tent right now being attended to Montreal Estelle is in. They took that targeting call standing out of the language. It is either confirmed or overturned. There is no the call stands anymore and it really is I think to give the benefit of the doubt to the defensive player initially called for targeting so no ejection but an injury we'll keep an eye on there's Kennedy McCoy out of the backfield for a game of five well it's worth mentioning we don't know if if B.J. Foster is going to be able to come back into this football game I think they'd be very cautious with him with that injury obviously uh, to come back into this football game you know who they're playing next week uh, but they're already without Caden Stearns and DeMarvion Overshone, as, as Todd mentioned off the top at that safety position playing without two more corners so this secondary has been decimated for Texas Josh Groudon will put it away. Brandon Jones is back deep. They'll let it bounce. And it will be downed inside the one. George Campbell down to the right spot. Goes to a 55-yard punt. For now, that stands. Texas first and ten inside their own wall when we come back. Seven all. West Virginia and Texas. And the Longhorns have the football. Backed up at their own one-yard line. Closed end of the stadium. Ellinger. With some time, throws, and it is caught. It's Devin Duvernay. Who else? And he stays on his feet, rumbling out just shy of the 40-yard line. A gate of 37 on first and 10 from their own one. Well, no play this season exemplifies how much Sam Ellinger has grown than that one right there. I can't tell you how hard it is to stand in your own end zone, take a seven-step drop, throw a layered throw on a deep out route like that to Duvernay. That's as good as you can do. I was standing five yards behind him, and I was nervous for him. <laughs> Protection was really good there. Here comes a blitz by West Virginia. It's picked up nicely by Ingram, the back. But in the end, then Darius Cowan able to bring him down in the sack. Loss of four on the play. Boy, and Keontae Ingram stepped up to pick up that blitz, and he's down on the field. He is hurt. And that's a big blow for Texas. He has been a, a revelation as a true sophomore. You're going to see in this in this blitz pickup situation a big linebacker coming through the middle. You got to put your face in there. And Ingram's not a small guy by any stretch, but he's in obvious pain. Running backs have been the health of running backs for Texas have been a real issue. At one point, the running backs were practicing in green jerseys. They could not afford to lose any of those backs. You see Ingram. Gives the old college try. He goes in there, and, and sometimes you'll just go in and cut that linebacker, especially if he's bigger than you, but he decides to stay up and look like he was favoring his the left side of his body. But he's up now running off the field. It's a good sign. You mentioned the injuries. Kirk Johnson, Daniel Young, Jordan Whittington, who's a true freshman who they're really excited about. has been battling a sports hernia. And we're going to get a heavy dose of Roshan Johnson now, the quarterback. He's a true freshman that moved unselfishly to running back. They're going to call on him now. Second down and 15 with Ingram off. At their own 32. Underneath shallow cross, caught, the ball comes out. They're going to say incomplete pass on the field. Cade Brewer was the intended target. Darius Stills and Josh Norwood able to break it up. Josh Norwood makes a great play here. You don't want these safeties to hit up in the head or neck area, so this is what's going to happen. They're going to hit right on the thigh board, and that's as good as you can do it by Norwood. And I think that's the right call of an incomplete pass. Third and 15. Texas' 
has had no trouble converting these lengthy third downs. Let's see. Pressure up the middle, trying to set up the screen to Roshan Johnson, couldn't handle it. Balls came on the pressure on Ellinger. They had it set up perfectly, but Johnson could not hang on fourth down. And a drive that started so promising for Texas from their own one washes out. Well, when they lose Keontae Ingram, I think there was a little bit of panic on that on that sideline. He's been such an important part of this offense. They need to regroup over there. They brought Roshan Johnson in, but they didn't decide to run the ball with him. They, they just had him lined up as receiver. Ryan Buczewski to his right with some pressure to run it and then pumped it away. Alex Sinkfield on the return. And he's taken down at the 24-yard line. The injury bug has been a big part of the season for Texas, and it continues to be. Welcome back to West Virginia. It is a full house in Texas's medical tent right behind me. Running back Keontae Ingram is in there. He was um, looking at and pointing to the left side of his neck. Also in there, B.J. Foster, he's being evaluated for a left shoulder injury. No word yet on whether or not he'll return. Also safety, Chris Brown, nursing a thigh injury sustained in the first drive, Steve. Need a bigger tent. A team meeting in there. Milo will keep you updated on all the injury news. If I'm West Virginia, I, I try to run the ball one time. It's just one time. There you go. And here it is. Kennedy McCoy. First carry. There you go. On first down. First down yardage. Joseph Osai, the stop, but not until McCoy had a gain of 18. Well blocked. Yeah, nice job by this offensive line up front. We've got some young guys playing at the center and, and left guard positions in Mays and Miter. Colton McKivitz, 53, is their best player on offense at left tackle. Here's McCoy. Make a few people miss, lower the shoulder, and fall forward for a couple. There's a flag down. Montrell Estelle made the stop, and again, he's in for Foster for now. Brad Van Vark has been rather busy this afternoon. Still two and a half to play in this first quarter. Holding offense number 18. Ten yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. Sean Ryan, the sophomore receiver out of Brooklyn. And Neil Brown is, is the head coach, obviously, but he's also the play caller uh, from the sideline. He's, he's, he's got a, a, a small play sheet because he memorizes the, the calls. Every single, he has 60, 70 calls in a game, and he'll memorize all of them. That's the kind of coach he is. He's got a photographic memory, and this is the last time you'll hear me say that you and he were on the same page with that run <laughs> call. Got it. Some Rain Man stuff there. Get him to a casino. On the ground. Kennedy McCoy, and why not? Delhi, a day away. We had the interception earlier, the Texas cash in the points. Made the stop, but not until a nine-yard gain. It's an important drive here for Neil Brown in West Virginia. Obviously, you had a frenetic pace to start the game. You get the touchdown, then you get the turnover, and they tie it up. And now we've kind of gone back and forth with some, some injuries, targeting calls. West Virginia has an opportunity here right before the end of the first quarter to take back momentum of this game. Second down on 11. Here's McCoy trying to turn the corner, and he does. A little burst of speed for the senior from Lexington, North Carolina. Gain a four on the play. This offensive line for West Virginia's got their hands full with the nose guards. Keandre Cobra right in the middle, number 99. He is a specimen of 340 pounds. He's just a redshirt freshman, but he is a man. If you don't know his name, you will after this game's over. He's the next great one for Tom Herman. When you look at the, the lineage that he's had, including Puna Ford, who's played way better than his draft status was coming out in the NFL, and I was reminded of that. But uh, but sure. Coburn is a special talent. Third down and seven, final minute of the quarter. Some pressure up the middle. Pendleton McCoy, and that's incomplete. And it will be fourth down. The offensive line has been an issue for West Virginia. Even McKivitz called it a jumbled mess. He was really refreshingly honest. He said the older guys didn't want to play as hard as the younger guys. 
things. And now guys are coming early to team meetings in the offensive line, and they've really gelled. Again, him and Wick line on the tackles were good, but the interior line due to injuries and I guess poor play, and now they sort of settled things down and figured it out. It's been much better offensive line play the last couple of games. catch at the 18 it's a 38 yard punt we talked about the true freshman Roshan Johnson what a story he is came in as a highly recruited quarterback saw all the injuries of the running back position went to coach Herman and said hey it's not fair all those guys getting in carries I think they really thought about redshirting him and why wouldn't you well, they may still redshirt him obviously you have four games but, uh, but Roshan Johnson came to Coach Herman. Herman was going to go forward, and Roshan said, listen, there's too much pressure being put on Keontae Ingram. Let me take some of the pressure off. Remember, he's a quarterback, and they still have plans for him to be a quarterback. But right now, he's their best running back option outside of Ingram. On the ground, Ellinger to throw. But Devin Duvernay thought he might try to throw one there. The screen works out. It is a... Penalty flag down. Washington brought down Duvernay. But after a gain of seven on the play, we'll check that penalty marker. Holding offense number 81. Half a distance to the goal. Replay first down. Reese Lato, the tight end, called for holding. So they come out of the fourth game, the game against the win over Oklahoma State, and they have a conversation. And uh, Johnson says to Coach Herman, what do you think? And Herman says, I think you're still the second best yeah. tailback on the team. Yeah. Not going to play quarterback here next year either. Well, that's the thing that, that Coach Herman said, right, is you're not going to beat out Sam Ellinger in his senior year. So why not you know, give it a shot? But I do think probably the, the biggest thing is going forward, Roshan Johnson is going to be the quarterback after Sam Ellinger, and he's built in the same way at 220 pounds. Ellinger trying to get out of there. Tackled down from behind by Jordan Jefferson after the gain of three. But well, that's an important point. I think people think about the red shirt, always the freshman. You can red shirt your junior year if you want to. Right. Well, he could red shirt next year, right? When you still have Ellinger. And if you get a health, you know, healthy stable of running backs, then he can do it there. But I think, you know, Roshan Johnson, he can throw the football. Obviously, we know he can run. So the, the great thing for Herman is you don't have to change the offense very much once Ellinger is gone. An unselfish player in every way. First quarter is complete. Home squad got off to a big start. Then Texas forced a turnover. Touchdown of their own. We're seven all on our way to the second quarter. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, Molly McGrath from Morgantown, West Virginia as we open up quarter number two, continuing the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. 7-7. Here at a sold-out Milan Pushkar Stadium. Mountaineer Field. As we begin quarter number two. Ellinger to throw. Able to complete. It's Malcolm Epps who is on the receiving end of the lone touchdown pass. It's a gain of five. Ellinger has 10 touchdown passes of 20 yards or longer this season. That's the exact opposite, right? That's the big problem for Austin Kendall. And Ellinger has excelled in that department. Well, it'll be interesting to see with Tim Beck. You know, without Keontae Ingram, really only one healthy back in Roshan Johnson, whether this becomes more of a pass-heavy game for Ellinger. Third and 11. Too high. Could not hook up with Brandon Eagles. Good coverage by Norwood of West Virginia. A great job by Keith Washington from his corner position. You're going to see him come out of the screen here, trying to throw this ball to the outside. Here he is right here. Washington just reads the eyes and gets a finger on that ball. Washington has made a number of nice plays Ryan, early in this game. Fun formation for the long board. Back to the turn for the Mountaineers. Buczewski from his own five. Sinkfield is back deep for West Virginia. And he will let it roll. 
And West Virginia will start with excellent field position from their own 39-yard line. Tonight, top 25 showdown in the Big Ten. Michigan State, Ohio State from the shoe in Columbus, 7.30 Eastern, right here on ABC, and streaming on the ESPN app. Chris, Kirk, and Maria will have that for you. November of 2014, in this matchup, Ezekiel Elliott went off at a buck 54 and two scores. Mike Thomas, 91 receiving yards, and current Texas head coach Tom Herman was the offensive coordinator for the Buckeyes, and Ohio State went on to beat Bama in the semifinal and Oregon in the championship game, and could make the argument the success of that offense set Tom Herman up to be hired as head coach at Houston, and now on to Texas, where he is enjoying success. Lenny Brown, his first carry, first down the yardage, gain of 11 on the play, a sophomore from Philadelphia. It'll be interesting to see the cat and mouse game here with Neil Brown calling plays and Todd Orlando on defense for Texas. Obviously, they're, they're hurt. They've got to protect the secondary. The throw is caught. T.J. Simmons bounces off, stays on his feet, down the sideline. He's inside the five-yard line. There's the big chunk play the Mountaineers were looking for. 44 yards. T.J. Simmons from Austin Kendall. And why not? If you're Neil Brown, attack that secondary. Continue to push the ball down the field. That time a missed tackle by Brown. Betty Brown inside the five. Let's, let's see the pinball machine here. Well, this is Chris Brown, number 15, is playing that backup secondary position. Just comes up, tries to make a big hit, but doesn't wrap. Simmons stayed on his feet there. Back to Lenny Brown, just shy of the goal line. He's third down, gain a two on the play. And this is not going to be just easy pushing this ball in with Keandre Coburn, Malcolm Roach. You've got to get the ball to the perimeter. Keeper, Kendall, walks in untouched. Touchdown, West Virginia. You got injuries uh, for Texas, and you got a, a quarterback in Austin Kendall that's continuing to get more and more comfortable with Neil Brown calling plays, and all of a sudden, this looks like a little bit of a trap for the Longhorns. Evan Staley on the extra point, 14-7 Mountaineers. Great play fake from Austin Kendall. Everybody goes for the back. There's nobody left for the quarterback. And the joint is jumping. They striped the stadium. I'm not sure when I was in college, I would have been able to figure out which, what color to wear, what section I'm in. <laughs> people here, here, one guy with white on. <laughs> the people really, really good at following directions. <laughs> You were always that one guy. That's, I'd be the one guy in a white shirt. That's beautiful. That's <laughs> yeah, a great scene here, and they're excited. Neil Brown's got a little buzz coming here in, yes. in Morgantown at 3-1, and one, and now up 14-7 against the hated Texas Longhorns. Yeah, have we seen anybody flash the horns down yet? Just a few. Get into that story as the afternoon develops, just in case you're not aware, wherever you're watching. Duvernay from the 15. Devin Duvernay picking his spots out to the 31. Set for an update back to Cassidy. Thanks, Steve. It's a messy one in the swamp. After the fifth turnover of the game, Florida capitalizing on an Auburn interception. Kyle Trask to Josh Hammond. Trask with two touchdown passes and three fumbles. Gators up 14-6 in the second, Steve. That is messy. So uh, Gino did a piece on game day this morning, Greece, about Kyle Trask, and I, I did not realize it. He did not start a single game yeah, in high school. That was a great story Gino did, and what a credit to Trask, right? Can you and, imagine you're starting in the SEC, <laughs> and you couldn't start one game in high school. I put that on the coaches of that high school. Oh, they're feeling it right now. Don't you worry. 
And you just made it worse, too, by the way. There's Rochon Johnson, the ball carrier on first down. It's a gain of four. And Darius Cowan makes the stop. Well, we talked about it. You know, without Keontae Ingram, it's going to be a heavy dose of Roshan Johnson. The question I have is, how much more is Tom Herman going to allow Sam Ellinger to run the football? They've tried to protect him out in the field, not having him take so many hits, but they may need him in this game without Ingram. Second down and six. Ellinger to throw. Protection is excellent. Shot down the sideline. Eagles had no chance at that one. Working on Akeem Bailey. Big story in Morgantown today. And this week, no Giovanni Stewart. We talked with Coach Brown about it. He said, look, he's not playing and he's not hurt. Rather murky situation going on with him. With the four-game redshirt rule in play, they'll make a decision and finalize things probably next week. But still, they're banged up in the secondary as well. He's one of their better players back there, the senior from Katy. And it's been a big story here in town. Yeah, you would think, you know, being from Katy, Texas, he'd want to be in this game to play against the Longhorns. Third and six. Ellinger out of there. He'll throw to Johnson out of the backfield. And an excellent tackle made. That's Keith Washington got a hand on the foot. Just enough for him to bring him down. That's another part of his game, Brian. That thing has gotten so much better. He's, Ellinger is so patient in the pocket. He trusts his protection. And, and that allowed him to go through his progressions and finally find Johnson out in the flat. Well, Todd, this is the best offensive line that Sam Ellinger and Tom Herman have had at Texas. No we question. talking with them yesterday. They were really confident in these guys up front. First down and ten. On the ground, it is Johnson. Out to the logo at midfield. Dante Stills made the stop, and I believe the, the quote from Tom Herman was, I can't really quote him on TV, but he said, we blocked the hell out of LSU, <laughs> or something along those lines. Of course, you know, they didn't win that game. It came up short 45-38, but the, the offensive line really did a job in that game. Yeah, Sam Cosby, the left tackle, the blocking Palladion chase on. Johnson again. A strict diet of Roshan Johnson. Reuben Jones makes the stop. Ingram hurt. Jordan Whittington is already out of the lineup. Of a sports hernia surgery. And they are banged up there. Kirk Johnson is now checked into the game. Yeah, so they're lucky to have Kirk Johnson back. He came off a shoulder injury. So uh, they need him, obviously, to take the load now off of Roshan Johnson. Johnson has yet to carry on the season. Daniel Young is potential to play in the game. He has four rushes this season. And Ellinger to throw. Short hops it. Could not hook up with Marcus Washington, true freshman from St. Louis. Again, at one point, they had one scholarship running back on the roster. That was Ingram. The running backs are practicing in the green jerseys. Is that a common? The running backs don't get hit in practice? That's how thin they were at the yeah. running back position. Yeah, it's it's been a problem. And uh, the other problem that's starting to rear its head here is, is the, being on the same page with Ellinger and these receivers on the outside. Obviously, he's in, in sync with Duvernay, but somebody else outside of Colin Johnson. Colin Johnson is a superstar wide receiver, but they don't want to play him today. They want him to be 100% healthy to play next week against Oklahoma. But some of these other guys need to step up. Brennan Eagles, we've seen him be off, uh, off page with Ellinger a couple times in this game. Washington's been not on the same page. They've got to get that worked out. So here's a third down, and Duvernay is not on the field, has not been for this entire series. Washington in motion, top of your screen for a third and four. Inside the 40 of West Virginia, trailing by seven. There's some Mountaineer pressure. Elliger unloads and completes to Washington. Needed four and got 14. First down, Texas. Really smart there from Sam Ellinger. Has a big third down conversion. They gave free access to Washington on the outside. And when you, what I mean by free access is the corner's not up in your face. He's deep. So just run a five-yard hitch. That's all you need to get the first down and, and execute the play. 
Johnson remains in the backfield. Senior from San Jose. Back from his own shoulder injury. 9.20 to go in the half. At the West Virginia 25. On the ground is Johnson. Wrapped up, but Johnson will keep those legs churning. Until the whistle blows and picks up seven. There's nothing there, and he made six yards out of it. And West Virginia is, is substituting wholesale their defensive line. Last couple of plays, they haven't had the Stills brothers in. But now you get down in this red zone area, and Vic Coning, the defensive coordinator, is going to get his best players back on the field. Coning said he listens daily to Joel Osteen. For life's, helps him with life's daily challenges. Here's a challenge here today. The Texas in the stadium. And a beautiful hole. Roshan Johnson has first down yardage. Gain a six. Excellent block from the tight end, Kane Brewer. Yeah, great blocking up front. You mentioned Darius Stills. He gets off the ball, but it's a nice job of trapping him by Parker Braun, the left guard. Braun's been a nice addition to this offensive line. He was a first-team All-ACC player last year at Georgia Tech and transferred in, and he has made an immediate impact on this offensive line. See how good Texas has been in the red zone. Who needs field goals? They don't have any on their 14 trips. 12 touchdowns, no field goals. You turn it over a couple times on downs. Tom Herman running out here under the field to get that last time out. You think he wants the time out there then? <laughs> Certainly looked that way. College football on ABC is brought to you by Mazda. Feel alive. Pacific Life, 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. And Coca-Cola. Share a Coke this football season with your friends, family, and fans. Celebrating the 50-year anniversary of this Peach Bowl team. Bobby Bowden was the offensive coordinator for West Virginia. He knew it would be a mud bowl. He installed the wishbone two weeks before the game. Eddie Williams ran for 208 yards. The Mountaineers attempted two passes. Two. I'm surprised. That's, that's a, in that mud, I wouldn't have attempted any pass. West Virginia beat South Carolina 14-3. Here's Ellinger to throw. End zone making it look easy. It's John Burt. All by himself and in front of Keith Washington. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. Now Keith Washington has played an excellent football game so far, but he just gets tangled up here. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on John Bird, and for some reason, he's in a backpedal in the middle of the end zone. Why are you backpedal in the middle of the end zone? You can't run back in the end zone. That was just a mental breakdown from Washington, and a nice job by Ellinger identifying an easy touchdown. Here's Dicker. He was nearly ejected earlier in the game for targeting. You heard me right. Stay in the game. 7.56 left in the half, and we're tied at 14-all. Today's Aflac trivia question. I'll wait. Aflac. Thank you. Who was the last transfer quarterback to win a national championship? Oh. Transfer quarterback. Transfer quarterback to win a national championship. Right. Okay, uh, See, Cam Newton was a transfer. He won a national championship. Uh, is he the last? Yes. I'm going to say. I'm gonna say How much time are you going to give me? Are you going to jam me with this again? <laughs> we'll give you until after the kickoff. All right. Uh, don't let him. Don't look. Let's see. Alabama and Clemson. Where, let's go through their transfer <laughs> quarterbacks there. Uh, no transfers to Clemson. Might, oh, I got might it. Be on I got it. Might be on the side. I got it. You're good. <laughs> He started Florida State, ended up in Alabama. Yes. <laughs> did you really did you cheat? Cheat? I don't know. Oh, you hide that thing from me now. You're pretty dishonest when it comes to the athletic trivia question. 14 must all. Be right. Chris has wandering eyes. <laughs> Underrate the play of the half. Touchback. Look it out to the 25. We won't make you wait that that much longer. The last transfer quarterback to win a national championship. And the answer is Jay Coker. Jay Coker. At Florida State, he backed to DJ Manuel, then lost the starting job to Jameis Winston as a redshirt sophomore. Coker transferred to Alabama. He was backup to Blake Sims for winning the starting job his senior year. 
And we're, 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 we have that question uh, for what reason? Because Austin Kendall, we think they're going to win the national championship? Or are we talking about oh, Jalen Hurts? Look, you were looking for the tie-in. Yeah, where's the tie-in? Not sure. See B.J. Foster, that's a good sign for Tom Herman back out on the field at safety. Martel Petaway in the backfield for West Virginia. And Kendall's going to keep it, and it will slide down. Austin Kendall all of a sudden thinks he's Sam Ellinger. There is a flag down. Joseph Asai, does he look guilty? We'll see. After the player was down, personal foul, unnecessary roughness from the 46 in the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Guilty as charged. Here's Molly. Well, Steve, Texas coaches are telling the secondary to focus on the fundamentals, saying wrap them up on contact or you're going to get beat. I'm seeing way too many missed tackles. And they also said, you see that last touchdown? See that as a wake-up call. We can't afford any mistakes. You guys need to respond here. Steve. Thank you, Molly. First down and 10. On the ground, here's Petaway. Another first down for West Virginia. Brandon Jones came up to make the stop, gain of 11. Well, the recipe is there now for West Virginia to run the football because Todd Orlando is going to play it safe and protect his secondary. Going fast, T.J. Simmons. And the Mountaineers down to Texas 21. And this tempo now by West Virginia starting to take its toll. Texas struggled against LSU when they went super fast. Sean Ryan for a couple. Anthony Cook, the sophomore from Houston, stop after the game of two. Under seven to play. Kendall to throw for it, and Simmons could not hang on. That Oklahoma State victory was costly for Texas. They lost three starters in the defensive backfield. Jalen Green out with a shoulder. They hope Green can be back in a couple of weeks. Lost Josh Thompson. He has the most serious of the injuries. A broken foot put a pin in it. That could be a season-ending deal. And Cade Stearns, a knee injury, their top tackle. They hope to get him back. But that was a costly victory. Third down and nine. Lucky to get Foster back this game. He goes out, then comes back in. Play clock was down One. to four, yeah, and then Neil Brown called a timeout, which was a smart timeout. Big third down coming up. Yeah, so don't go away. On that, Steve. Hi, right, Cassidy, thank you very much. Cassidy Keyhoff, David, on that critical game today at the Swamp. Gainesville. Another quarterback goes down for Florida. So. Big third and nine situation here for Austin Kendall. Looks like Texas is going to bring a little bit more pressure. Third and nine, running with Petaway to the line of scrimmage, stays on his feet. He'll get a couple. Keandre Coburn makes the stop. Well, that was a very conservative call from Neil Brown. I think he, he ran the ball there to see if he could get into a fourth and four or less situation. He probably would have gone for it, but he didn't quite get enough. And so he's got to bring the field goal unit out. I'm going to be honest, I'm really surprised if he ran the ball there. How well your quarterback Kendall's playing and how much confidence he's had in the matchup you have against this secondary. Evan Staley is on. To attempt a 36-yard field goal. In West Virginia to give the Mountaineers the lead, and it is no good. <laughs> Staley had made 17 of 18 in his career inside of 40 yards and made 14 in a row. But not this one. Yeah, now both kickers have missed early in this game. But what a stop there for Todd Orlando and this, this Texas defense, right? They've been decimated in the secondary, haven't had really, you know, the, the playmakers back there, but this might be one of those high-scoring affairs with right. all the injuries on defense. Texas got off to a rough start. They actually bounced on the runway here in Morgantown. They had a bumpy landing here when they arrived yesterday, and they're up against it here today on offense now. They're trying to do something with Roshan Johnson. 
Good second effort by Josh. He's a fun player to watch. You can tell already. Gain of 16 on the play. As a former quarterback, this guy's got some leg strength. I mean, he is he's strong. You can see, you don't expect that from a quarterback that's moving over from that position to running back. Hey, and Devon Duvernay is there, as you see, in the slot position. So he's back in the lineup for Texas. Todd, Todd does see how big Ellinger's legs are, right? I do. Okay. He's right next to him. Yeah. <laughs> he should be able to see him. There's not many like him. <laughs> Here's Ellinger now. Throws and completes to Brennan Eagles. It's a gain of three to Bailey on the coverage. Todd, looking at Ellinger and Johnson next to each other, they're very similar, right? 162, 163. They're both over 220 pounds. They are. Ellinger's a little thicker, but they you can tell with the leg strength, and, and they look a, a lot alike. Obviously, both mobile, and we've seen Johnson just in pregame, the ability to throw the ball. Yep. Here's Johnson, cross midfield, first down yardage. He'll keep running for more. Gain of 14 on the play. Guzman and Bailey made the stop. What I love is his patience and vision. Look at this vision here. I mean, that's pretty easy to read, but to get north and south, to get skinny through the hole, uh, to, to be able to understand the running game. Imagine when Roshan Johnson then goes back to quarterback. His understanding of the offense is going to be that much better. Blocking schemes, blitz pickups, and the running game. All those things are going to help him when he does go back, if he does go back to quarterback. Got a good guy to learn from, and Sam Ellinger. Happy birthday, Sam. He turned 21 on Monday. I remember my 21st birthday. Spent it a little differently. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Sideline pass of beauty to Cade Brewer. Inside the 20 of West Virginia. And Texas is in business after a gain of 25. Give credit to Roshan Johnson again. Look at this blitz pickup. He stands in there and gives Ellinger just enough space to fit that ball into Brewer on the sideline. On a second clap. Ellinger under some pressure rolling to his right. We'll see if they're going to call that a catch. That is Duvernay, and he made the grab. Like the Superman dive out of bounds with the football. Well, that play was well covered by West Virginia, but not covered well enough for Duvernay and Ellinger. Let's see if they're going to look Early at that. on the field and a completed pass is on the further review. I thought, I thought Ellinger was throwing that one away. And then Duvernay popped into your screen, and we believe made the grab. At least that's the call on the field. Well, they wanted to throw this ball back. It was a throwback call to Roshan Johnson. They wanted that. It wasn't there. Ellinger didn't give up on it and just kept rolling out, and he and Duvernay made a play. Let's see, he's got to check the catch. And where is he when he made the catch? That's a catch. Shake it, don't break it. 60,000 on hand, having a good time. Well, that's how you entertain in a TV timeout, that's right? That's right. Give you a little snippet of it. You don't get kind of, that kind of enjoyment unless you buy a ticket and come out to the old stadium. And they have banged out the building here today. When we went away, they were looking at the catch. It was another catch for Duvernay. Five catches, 81 yards. On the afternoon for Devin Duvernay. That'll be the first time you see him smile in that picture on the bottom. He's all business, almost all the time. Ellinger, pocket breaks down, running up the middle, and carried into the end zone for the touchdown. Sam Ellinger, with nothing around him to do, takes off and hits Cater. Touchdown, Texas. Come on the road, and you're in a tight ball game, hostile environment, and you got to depend on your quarterback. And Sam Ellinger's been up to the task. This play is beautifully covered by West Virginia. The only thing they can't account for are the legs of number 11. And if anybody is better in college football at finishing in the end zone, you want to show them to me? Tom Herman says he doesn't get enough national love, Grease. We're, you know, after all the awards, the award shows, and bowl season, where's the love for Sam Ellinger nationally? He's earning some more of that 
today. Ellinger's 20th career rushing touchdown, the fifth quarterback in Texas history to do that. Let's go back and take a look at this. Watch him go through his reads. He's got he's got one read here, right? And then he's going to come here to two, then three, and then after all that's over, he's got this wide open field and he makes that decision. That's that's impossible for a defense to defend three, four routes and then still account for the quarterback. And if Sam Elder can continue to play like that, uh, I agree, he should be in the Heisman race. I think he's playing better this year. No question. I think he's become a more complete quarterback. And he's always been able to do the running, but now he's standing in, going through progressions and throwing more accurately. I've been impressed with how much he's improved from a year ago at this time. And, and Todd, you got to give credit to the offensive line, too, because they're giving him time to go through his reads, whereas before the last couple of years, he hasn't always had that time. Touchback, West Virginia will get the football trailing for the first time today. Take a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. Well, West Virginia came out gangbusters, throwing the ball down the field, make this play, Austin, Kendall, and James. But then the turnover, and they tied it up, and Kendall comes back and gets another touchdown. But Texas, they have so much firepower on offense. Despite the fact that they've lost Keontae Ingram in this game, they are still humming on the offensive side. And we still might be headed for that Big 12 shootout you were looking for with three and a half to play here in the first half. Set up Kennedy McCoy to get outside for 30. Game of five, a hard-hitting affair. Brandon Jones put a lick on him there. See the number on Kendall. Like to have that interception back, which led to the first Texas touchdown. But other than that, he played a nice game. Second and five. West Virginia sideline. Tell you what, I wouldn't run at him. <laughs> well, he's right in the middle. <laughs> it's hard to run away from him. He's going to demand a double team on every snap, huh, Todd? I completely agree. 340 pounds. He's got power, but what impresses me, you don't see many guys his size that can actually run. He can get off of blocks and go make plays. And I think, like I said earlier, I think he's got a chance to be one of the special players at Texas. He, he beat out senior Gerald Wilbon for a starting job. That's that's really saying something to Texas. When a redshirt freshman can beat out a senior. Prior to the snap, timeout, West Virginia. Their second and a half. It'll be 30 seconds in there. West Virginia will spend a timeout. They're still working on the equipment, the referee's microphone here today in the stadium. Tom, Tom Herman couldn't say enough good things about Coburn. See, he just pushes the center back. And, you know, they've had some good nose guards here. Puna Ford, Chris Nelson were both captains of this uh, Texas team as nose guards. And Tom Herman thinks that Coburn has every opportunity as he gets older to be another captain in that lineage. He said he's got two speeds, full and off. <laughs> and, of course, his nickname is Snacks. Of course. Why, why wouldn't it be? And, and for Duvernay, who never smiles, apparently, can you imagine Coburn doing all of this always with a smile on his face? Life is good. I mean, Keandre Colburn, why wouldn't it be? I bet he goes full bore at the uh, dinner table, too. With a smile. <laughs> Third and four. Kendall underneath. Haskins able to duck under the defender and get the first down yardage. Gain of six. Beats Deshaun Jamison. Interesting here, West Virginia is deciding to slow it down. They've been going as fast as possible with Neil Brown. And now just under two minutes left in this first half, and they're slowing it down. Maybe they want to protect their defense. They've been on the field quite a bit, but two-minute situation. you got to get, get some points here before halftime. Set up the draw. 
to pet away for a few. Stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Kevin Nagandi, Jonathan Vilma, and Mark Sanchez are standing by. Catch up date. Everything going on in the swamp and elsewhere around college football on this first Saturday of October. A little chill in the air. Kind of nice. Texas was bringing people, or maybe just a person, in Jawan Mitchell. He ran across that line. He crossed the line, Greece. Mitchell's just a sophomore from Newark who's been pushing for playing time. Offside. Defense number six. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. West Virginia has chosen to start the uh, play on the snap. A little over anxious is Jawan Mitchell. Seven penalties so far against Texas accepted for 60 yards. There's Petaway. Maybe, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, this is a real conservative approach by Neil Brown before halftime. I, and I, I get it. You know, you're, you just want to stay in the game here. But at the same time, you know, you're only going to have so many shots and so many possessions. And this Texas secondary has been decimated. Why not take some shots? You haven't gotten the ball to Sam James since the touchdown. Take a shot with him downfield. And Texas will get the ball to start the second half. Final minute. Third down and two. Approaching midfield. Just one timeout left. Ticket off the clock. Yeah, no urgency at all. Kendall to throw. Able to complete. It is Sean Ryan, but he stays in bounds. Clock will stop for the first down. Anthony Cook and Brandon Jones gain an eight on the play. Evan Staley's career long is 49, if you were thinking about it. Singfield nearly has his head taken out by Joseph Asai. Gain of three. Ten seconds left. Yeah, now a timeout from, from Neil Brown. But it's too little too late now. You know, you, you, you wasted too much time early in this drive. And I, I think he's gonna, he would say, well, I want to make sure I got the tight end. I got the first down before I went fast. But, like, that's a – you can't have a conservative approach at the start of the drive and then want to hurry up at the end. Tonight at 10, the middleweight championship is on the line. It's Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya. To order the main card in English and Spanish, go to ESPNplus.com slash PPV. And Big 12 fans, ESPN Plus, the exclusive home of Big 12 Now. Sign up today, get Les Miles all-access show, and over 50 men's basketball games and hundreds of other Big 12 games. And Asanya said despite a 5-1 record, Greece, he won't return to boxing. He said, I don't want to fight some guy and say, oh, well, we'll duke it out. We're only using our hands. I've got to kick someone in the face. Oh. Now, you're not getting involved with ESPN Plus tonight <laughs> after that. Are you kidding me? Get involved. 13 ticks remaining. Well, now, you, first now you got to take a shot to the outside. Hopefully get out of bounds. Or if you, if you are caught inbounds, you got to get about 10, 15 yards to get in Staley's range. Uh, you got to get up and spike the football. Here's Kendall. Good protection. Kendall running. Throwing. And let's see. Sideline traffic and a catch. Sam James. What a grab. does is make tough grabs the touchdown catch was an unbelievable grab and that time that catch from James is going to at least give Staley an opportunity for a long one Looked like that ball might have hit the ground too similar to the touchdown catch here's Staley Let's take a look at that yeah last catch certainly looked uh, when we looked at it live that it was a catch a good catch from James the left foot in 
And good on that part. Does he control it all the way to the ground? Does the ground help him make that catch? I thought the ground helped on that one. So a few more looks for you. Really can't really can't tell from that angle. Out of that angle. But uh, all in the field is good for a catch. Yep. I don't see anything there that's going to overturn the call on the field. What a uh, exciting first half of football. You know, great. West, West Virginia coming into this game, they had to be, if you told them at halftime you're going to be in a situation where you can attempt a field goal to make this a one score game, I think they would have taken that. James doesn't do anything the easy way. He had a spectacular grab. He just referenced the Greece for a touchdown. And they had to take a look at that as well. The ball clearly touches the ground, but you can see there that's a good touchdown catch. He makes the catch regardless of the help from the ground. And how about yeah. on this one? Well, you talk about a redshirt freshman stepping up for West Virginia and for Neil Brown. You know, there's no more David Sills, no more Gary Jennings. Those guys are gone, and they're looking for playmakers, Neil Brown is, and they have certainly found one in Sam James. He's been their most productive skill player this no, season. No Marcus Sims, academic right, issues. Right. They lost a ton of talent on the offer. Trevor Wesco was a great tight end, got drafted, and obviously Will Greer. Stands as called. Stands as called. You know, that was one of the more amazing things. I think this would be shocking. West Virginia had five players drafted in the NFL. Texas had two. Yeah. Right? You would it, never think West Virginia would have more players in any given year drafted in the NFL. And four of Texas. them on the offensive side. Right. David Long was the only defender. So here's Evan Staley. It should be the final play of the half. 47-yard field goal attempt. Each team has missed a field goal kicking in this direction. And Texas has spent a timeout. Are we icing the kicker with four seconds left in the first half? Yes. Okay. Asked and answered. Thank you. Well, he's already missed one. Why wouldn't Tom Herman call the timeout? <laughs> Got to be thinking about it. Missed the chippy. He missed from 36. Earlier again, that at the same end of the field. There's not a significant win, but there is wind blowing in his face. The miss for Dicker was from 42, also at this end. Again, career long for Staley is 49. Hit a 44 yarder earlier this season against Kansas. missed for the second time. 21-14 Texas to the half. State Farm Halftime Report with Kevin, Jonathan, and Mark after these messages. Morgantown, West Virginia. You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. We get ready for third quarter action. 21-14 Longhorns in the Mountaineers. Back in the broadcast booth with Brian, Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. We'll get to Todd and Molly shortly. So people should not be surprised. It's a one-touchdown game. West Virginia, they've had Texas's number, winning three of the last four, right. including last year in Austin in that thriller. I think Texas better be ready for a four-quarter game. This is not going to be a blowout, but, you know, Sam Ellinger is on pace to throw 42 passes in this game, 21 in the first half. He's responsible for all three touchdowns for Texas in the first half. Uh, he's going to need to play well in the second half to win this game. And Texas gets the football to start the second half. Devin Duvernay will run it out about four yards deep out to the 20-yard line. Molly had a chance to catch up with head coach Tom Herman. 
Coach, what is Keontae Ingram's status for the second half? Uh, he got a stinger in the first half. Uh, X-rays were good. They're going to reevaluate reevaluate him at halftime. How has Sam Ellinger responded to the adversity in this game thus far? Oh, I think really well. You know, we're not running the ball as, as good as we thought we could. Um, we got to get that fixed, but uh, uh, I think he's playing pretty dang good. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And, Steve, I have confirmed from a team official that Keontae Ingram is available for this second half. And he is in the game right now to open up the third quarter. He stands to the left of Sam Ellinger. And he will carry on first down and ten. Crashes ahead for a gain of five. Dante Stills. Josh Chandler, the stop for West Virginia coming out of the locker room. That's a great sign for Texas offensively to have Ingram in this game. Looked like he had a stinger in that first half, but he is a special player. They are excited about him, the true sophomore. They just worked him in a little bit last year, but really he has become the feature back in this offense this season. Put on 20 pounds, and at that age and that position, that's a good thing, people, and 20 pounds. Able to fight through tackles like that one from Juan Darius Qualls. Gain a two on the play and bring up a, a third down. Talking with the, Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator, he said he's, he's really hard on himself, Keontae Ingram. Pushing to be the best he could possibly be. After he dropped that touchdown against LSU, he kind of went in the tank in that game. But since then, he has been outstanding. Taunting from the home crowd. There's no flag for that. Now the Mountaineers flash the horns down. That'll be a different story. Let's see. On third and three. Tight spiral completed to Malcolm Epps. First down, Texas. That's the second time that Sam Ellinger has just taken that free access hitch on the outside. As long as West Virginia is not going to come up and press the wide receivers on the outside on third down, Sam Ellinger is going to take it. I've been impressed with Ellinger all day on third down. It seems like he's so poised. That they've converted a lot of third downs this afternoon to keep drives going. He's not making it too hard, Todd. You know, if you exactly. see the easy throw, take it. True freshman from Philadelphia makes a stop. And Darius Stills again, number 56 in the backfield. He's just so quick off the ball. And by the way, the guy he's beaten at the center position is a heck of a football player, Zach Shackleford. Second down and 10. Ellinger will run for it and take a hard hit. Shoulder down by Dylan Tonkery. Gain a three on the play. That's, that's the hit that Tom Herman wants to avoid. In the middle of the field, second and long, you know, really nothing happening there. And your, and your playmaker is taking a huge hit in Sam Ellinger. But I think it goes to show you how much they're struggling to run the football when you have him running it himself. Third down and seven. Texas 70% conversions on third down. I don't know what the number, the good number is, but 70% would be good. Need seven. Under pressure and taken down. Drop by Darius Stills. Stills got just enough Bellinger. The loss of 13 on a sack. He's been in the backfield all game long. He's going to come up and then they're going to wrap around. But Stills, he's setting up the rush for the outside but doesn't give up on it. And you see the quickness and athletic ability to get to the quarterback. Loss of 13, third sack by this West Virginia defense. And Bucheski able to just get it away. A flag comes down. Back at the 15-yard line. Took a Texas bounce. And we'll check the marker. Brad Van Vark was rather busy in the first half. All right, it's exactly what West Virginia needed defensively to come out after halftime and get a stop and give the ball back to Austin Kendall, an opportunity to go down here early in the third quarter and potentially tie this football game up. Holding, kicking team number 80, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, replay fourth down. 
And Neil Brown's going to make him kick it again, which and I agree with that. Holding on the kicking team. Yeah, right in front of the punter, right in front of Bachevsky, there was a Brewer. hold. The tight end. Yep. Especially agree with this in college, right? Make him snap it again, make the punter catch it again and, and kick it again. And now a great opportunity for really good field position for West Virginia. Bachevsky's got good bloodlines. He's the cousin of Michael Dixon. The former all-world punter of Texas, now starring with the Seahawks in the NFL. Bachevsky gets that away. Sinkfield able to run up, make the catch, takes a couple of big hits. Only a 34-yard punt. And Austin Kendall. And West Virginia will start on the plus side of the football field. Back up in Oklahoma. Tough to back up a couple of guys better than Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, consecutive Heisman Trophy winners. So he was all involved in the, in the game planning anyway, the Oklahoma-Texas rivalry. And now he gets to face Texas as a member of West Virginia. Pretty impressive number so far today. Yeah, and he needs to get back to that aggressive approach. And Neil Brown calling plays, getting the ball to Sam James down the field. That was their best play in the first half. Off the play fake. Kendall takes a shot, got a man open, it is caught momentarily and intercepted. Sam James and Deshaun Jamison on a 50-50 ball, and I think Jamison won that battle. Great play by Jamison. They tried to run a double move with Sam James on an out and up on the outside. Looked like the, like the quarterback's hand may have gotten hit because that ball fluttered out. And Jamison able to make the unbelievable interception. Jamison over James. Welcome back to Morgantown. Great opportunity for Austin Kendall. They were trying to throw this out and up. What happens is Kendall steps up, and then he's going to get hit right here by, by the linebacker and is not able to throw that ball out in front of James. It could have been a touchdown, but the pressure turned it into an interception. Well, James had it with two hands, and then he lost it in the battle. Here's Kevin Duvernay, who's been doing his thing all afternoon. Gain of five on the play. That's one of those plays where you never know how a quarterback's going to react until they get out there and play. And Austin Kendall hasn't played a whole lot. You just have to, you have to take your eyes off the rush and throw that football. It definitely affected him. That was Jawan Mitchell who was coming after him. That's Ingram for three, Todd. Just watching that play, it's unfortunate as a quarterback when you, you you want it back. You go back and watch the tape. Kendall just he didn't step into that throw, and when he looks at it on tape, he's going to say, "Ah, oh, man, if I just drove my back leg and followed yeah. through, it's going to be six. You got to take that shot." Bit of a low snap, Ellinger. That was dangerous. Duvernay could not come up with it. Keith Washington on the cover. Duvernay was looking for a flag. Fourth down. Keith Washington, has, he gave up one touchdown in this game, but he has been impressive otherwise. He's reading routes, jumping on the outside. You know, he's 6'1 and 180 pounds. That's really thin for a 6'1 corner, but he's got great instincts. Hey, how about this West Virginia defense to open up the second half? Yep. They're going to get off the field again. Buczewski. From his own 10. With Sinkfield back for him. Signals for the fair catch at the 27. 45 yard punt. Two turnovers in the game. Both interceptions thrown by Kendall. He's back next. Let's take a look at today's biggest moments of the game. Brought to you by Samsung QLED TV. Yeah, some great plays uh, throwing the ball predominantly. Sam James has been the best playmaker for West Virginia. And we know who the best playmaker is for Texas. That's number 11. He's done it through the air and on the ground. But still just a one-score game. Molly McGrath. Well, West Virginia head coach Neil Brown told me there are way too many mistakes in that first step. He can't be happy about that interception. Told me their first drive will dictate the rest of the game for them. But afterwards, quarterback Austin Kendall went to his O-line, took responsibility for that interception, said, that's my bad, we'll be okay. And Brown said Kendall has been at his best when they're playing fast in this game. Kendall has just four incompletions all game, but two of those are the interceptions, the only two turnovers in the game. 
West Virginia down seven. I like that report. I like Austin Kendall, you know, manning up, taking responsibility. Let's see how he plays with it now. Give it to Kennedy McCoy. And the Texas defense right there. Joseph Asai with a loss of six. Joseph Asai has been kind of quiet in this football game. He's their best edge presence for Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator. And he certainly makes a, a positive play there. Born in Nigeria, wanted to go to Texas because of their computer science program. And the football program's pretty good, too. All start offense, number 76. Five yard coming, second down. Chase Barrett, the redshirt junior from Wildwood, Missouri. You know, I, the thing I like most about uh, Joseph Osai, outside of his play on the field, is, is kind of his attitude. And, and he's he's befriended the kicker and the punter, for for that matter. And you don't you don't hear that very much for a linebacker, a defensive guy that really has a great relationship no. with the kicker and, and the punter. Somebody has to. And it just shows there's no clicks on this team. You know that's important. There's Kendall on the ground to McCoy. Lowers the shoulder. Good stick from Anthony Cook. Gain of three. Thought I was reading where Tom Herman does not address his kickers or punters by the first name or any name. So that's not that, that's part of the click thing, right? That's right. an issue. Oh, can you imagine if Dicker had gotten that targeting penalty? He really he wouldn't have even mentioned his name in the, no. in the hallway. Under nine to go. Missed a field goal and a target. That would not be a fun week for Cameron Dicker. A problem in the kicking game on both sides today. Seven-point game, and West Virginia's missed a couple of field goals. Quick out from Kendall to T.J. Simmons. Gain of seven on the play on a third and 17. A little bit of jawing going on now down there with T.J. Simmons. Like the way that they came up and hit him low. That was a day away. Talking smack with Simmons. Groudon is back to punt. Third such punt for Josh Groudon. Jake Smith is back deep. Signal for the fair catch at the 26. Take a look at today's crunch time. Brought to you by Cheez It. Yeah, Sam Ellinger has been great in crunch time his whole career. But the thing that I've noticed this season that he's grown in progressions, going through the entire field, patience in the pocket, his mechanics have been flawless, and he's made conversions on third down. Backed up in his own end zone, five man rush. This is the most difficult thing a quarterback needs to do to throw from the foxhole underneath the shadow of your own goalpost, and a beautiful throw to Duvernay. Sam Ellinger has grown in a lot of ways passing the football. We know what he can do on the ground, but he's been impressive today. Out into the flat to Jake Smith. Smith down the sideline. It's a gain of eight on the plate. Jake Smith, true freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona. He's got four touchdowns this season. That's the most by, as you know, Greece, any freshman in the country. Sean Johnson getting this series. Give Keontae Ingram a bit of a breather. Reuben Jones to stop. Gain of three. I tend to agree with, with Tom Herman with, with respect to, to Sam Ellinger. I don't think he gets enough credit nationally for, for how good he's playing. But he is playing at a historic level. He's playing better than just about any Texas quarterback has played. And if you look back at some of the Heisman winners, like he's on pace with the statistics. Uh, he needs to be more front and center, in my opinion, in the, in the national conversation around the Heisman. We'll show you some of those numbers, the we know, comparables. We know next week we'll have a lot to do with that, too. Oklahoma looming. The Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Here's Ingram. Good second effort, stays on his feet, gain a six. Yeah, look at these numbers. I mean, he's the right first there. first four games of the season. Look at all these big boys and award winners. So how, how do you explain that? Like, this is a big-time program. Why wouldn't there be more national love for Ellinger? Well, it's early, okay? It's early in the season. I, I think what Tom Herman was upset about was that he, there wasn't more talk about him late at the end of last year. Right. Uh, but but he's, he's definitely in the conversation this year, and uh, it's... It, 
he's got a big enough stage, right? He doesn't need any more publicity. Uh, he just needs to continue to play the way he's been playing against teams like Oklahoma next week, and, and he'll be right there. And I didn't so realize, smart. talking to Tom Herman, I didn't realize that he, in high school, had that hand injury. It really affected his throwing motion as a freshman. Last year was kind of his first year where he started to feel healthy, and this year he had complete control of the offense. Broke his hand twice as a senior in high school. It's one way to ruin your senior season. Brandon Eagles could not come up with that ball off, off the grass. Never fails, you know, we talk about him, you know, the Heisman Trophy, and then the next, the, next, the next play, he throws one right in the dirt. <laughs> Killed some bugs on that one. But you're right, the attention, Texas gets NFL-type coverage yeah. in Austin. All eyes. He deserves it, Texas. He deserves all the, the accolades. He's not only a great player, but a great person, too. On the ground. Ingram. Squirts free for one yard. Tonkery made the stop. Brings up a big third down here. What's Vic Coning, defensive coordinator for West Virginia, going to do? They've been great in the second half. They've gotten two stops when they needed it, but Texas has been 7 of 12 on third downs. They've been on fire. Virginia can mess with Texas here. Some late pressure picked up nicely. And a tremendous defensive play by Akeem Bailey to get an arm there and knock it away from Malcolm Epps. Fourth down. Uh, we've talked a lot about Keith Washington on the other side. This time they go after Akeem Bailey, and he's up to the task. Another free access hitch on the outside, and that's really well done by Bailey. This West Virginia secondary lost Kenny Robinson due to what they called academic misconduct. Derek Pitts decided he want to be here anymore. And so on fourth down. Starting to wear Buchevsky out here. Sinkfield. Their catch at 10. Just a 39-yard punt. West Virginia football trailing by seven. Since we last saw West Virginia score, they've missed a couple field goals, thrown an interception, had a three and out. They didn't get back to a quicker pace. Yeah, they were they were going fast in the first half. This was a, a great drive. Look at they only 11 seconds between snaps. They get a first down with Petaway. They come right back. Neil Brown gets the call in quick, and Kendall's in rhythm, pushing the ball down the field. Texas was off balance. They need to get back to this if they want to start getting back in rhythm offensively, I believe. And they're starting with their worst field position of the afternoon. From their own 10, they come out throwing. Hop, skip, and a jump from Sean Ryan. to gain a nine on the play. And now they're going back to the line of scrimmage. Neil Brown got to get that play in, get that rhythm going. You know, Neil Brown comes from that air raid system. He played at Kentucky under Hal Mummy. They like to go fast. He won quickly at Troy at a 31 and 8 record. Coach of the year, all the bowl games, all the accolades. Well, when he was when he was coaching at Texas Tech, he had Seth Davey. They would snap the ball with like eight seconds in between plays. It was amazing. He was a very popular hire here, though, and nationally. Very well respected. Set up the screen nicely to Sam James. He'll put on a spin move. And all of that for four yards. <laughs> The reason I like going up tempo, especially against Texas, is their best player, Coburn, the, the defensive nose guard, is, is 340 pounds. And that, that's tough on a big man to go sideline to sideline and keep up with that tempo. That's why he's on the sideline now. <laughs> Kendall Throwick completing to Sam James. Joseph Asai made the stop. Tavondre Sweat is the replacement for now for Coburn. He's a true freshman in Huntsville, Texas. I think the only thing that's keeping Neil Brown from really ratcheting up this tempo is he, in the back of his mind, I think he thinks he needs to protect his defense. Right? This is a great offense for Texas. His defense is young. And if you go real fast and go three and out, you put him right back on the field. That's the only thing that he's worried about. And that West Virginia defense has played very well. Field the back, top of your screen in motion. Ball is knocked away at the line of scrimmage. Mark 
has Pimic. Pimic and, and Osai blitzing from the outside. I got a hand on it. McCulloch may have got a hand there too, but uh, Texas has has really stiffened defensively since that second quarter. Give them credit, and they're doing it short-handed in the secondary. Fourth down and three. Here's Groudon, the grad transfer from LSU, back to punt. His fourth opportunity. Punt return has been an issue for Texas. Brandon Jones is back for it. Signal for the fair catch at his own 21. It's a 48-yard punt. Texas back to the offense, up seven. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Bit of a sneaky shift at the top. Alabama jumped over Clemson, and they're both idle this week. And a whole lot of people making noise that number four should be number one. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard to argue with the way that they've looked. Another big game tonight. I think that defense for Michigan State and Joe Bocci will give them a little bit more resistance than they've faced today. Good luck blocking Chase Young if you're in Michigan. <laughs> He's the best defensive player in the country. Still looking for the Wolverines to crack into that top ten as well. Check back next week. Big win today, Michigan at home. Look, Sean Johnson help you in shot. the backfield. Did nothing for you? Nothing. <laughs> the best color man in the league for nothing. <laughs> Three and a half to play in the third. Ellinger with all sorts of time. Underneath it, and it is intercepted. Keith Washington with some green in front of him. Set of bounds inside the Texas 30. First turnover of the afternoon for the Longhorns. And players coming together on that West Virginia sideline, taking their time being separated. It's a 39 yard return by Keith Washington and his third interception of the season. And really the first mistake from Sam Ellinger in this football game. First down. You got a, a fresh set of downs on a new drive. You don't need to take this risk, this chance. That's the third time he's done this down the field. The other two times was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and I agree with it. But here you got three defenders back there. That had no chance of being successful. And now West Virginia is set up nice. He got greedy there, let's face it. I mean, he, he waited on it. He had Roshan Johnson open in the flat. He could have made an easy six, seven yards. And he just wanted to take a shot vertically. And they tacked on a penalty. That was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Tom Herman's looking for an explanation. Uh, two or three Texas players got caught on the sideline by uh, West Virginia. One of them was an offensive lineman. I think it might have been Kerstetter that was over there on the sideline. Well, the Mountaineers are in business now. Kendall will keep it. And the lasso down from behind of the 14, no gain. Brandon Jones brought him down. And now the tempo again for Neil Brown. Really trying to go fast. Quick throw. Sam James coming out of his break. The ball was upon him immediately, and he couldn't hang on. Third down. Go back and look at the end of that interception. You see a couple of guys over there. 68 is Kerstetter, 75 is Angilau, and they got up, both of them. It looked like Angilau took a cheap shot. I think that was the call. But Texas defensively now an opportunity to bow up after the interception and keep him out of the end zone. Third and 10 from the 14 of Texas. Pressure is picked up. Kendall throws underneath. Nowhere near the first down marker. That's Sam James. Stopped by Deshaun Jameson. It's a gain of two. And it's fourth down. Boy, give Todd Orlando's defense a lot of credit. 
They are playing well this second half. Since that second quarter, they're playing a little more man-to-man -man coverage. Deshaun Jameson that time in man-to-man -man coverage. Nowhere to go with that football. And they're doing it shorthanded. What a stand for this Texas defense. Giving up a field goal here is a win for the Longhorns. After the interception, the long return. And now here's Evan Staley. He's already missed twice from 47 and 36. Pushes this one through. And it's a four-point game. You know, five of the eight games in this series have been decided by seven points or less. Nobody will forget what happened last year. On uh, November the 3rd, the 40 acres, fourth quarter. 16 seconds left, trailing by one. They go for the two-point conversion. Will Greer gets it done. And what was interesting, people who remember that game, Greer actually completed a two-point conversion to David Sills, but Texas called timeout, so they had to go and try it again. And that's when Greer ran it in. But what a game that was. Oh, man. 42-41. That was one of the best games of the year last year. You saw both teams were ranked. And, you know, this West Virginia team a year ago, they, they were three points away from going to the Big 12 championship and maybe going to the Sugar Bowl. They lost to, to Oklahoma at the end of the year. Uh, but then, as you mentioned, they lost pretty much all of their offensive talent. The receivers, the quarterback, the tight end, really all the only thing they had left were the running backs. I'm not a shock that Dana Holgerson picked that moment maybe to make a change. <laughs> Good timing. Goes from power five to group of five and doubles his salary too. Well, there's that. That's a lot of winning there for Holgerson. This season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. And we are all appreciative of that. Thank you, Allstate. That wasn't a touchdown conversion after that interception, but the field goal has this crowd back in the game. This was the first game sold out. Talk about the rivalries. West Virginia definitely feels like this is a rivalry game. They don't get to play Pitt or Penn State or Virginia Tech on the schedule. Geographically speaking, where they are in the country, on the map, how to pick a rival. And they have chosen Texas. This is the big game on the home schedule. Roshan Johnson, the ball carrier. Conversely, we asked Tom Herman if this is a rivalry game. He said, look, they did a poll. There are 11 other schools that consider Texas their rival. <laughs> and, and Herman said, look, we've got really one rival, and we'll see them next week. That's Oklahoma. We probably have two. He said two, yeah. But we don't, they don't get to play Texas A&M. Which, which he wants to play Texas A&M. That would be great. Who doesn't want to see that? Can we, can we fix that, people? I'd like to see Pitt and West Virginia get back together, too. Here's Roshan Johnson staying on his feet. Out beyond the 45, Zach Shackelford, the center, the heart and soul of that offensive line with a key block. I think they need to get the football to, to Roshan Johnson a little bit more. I know Keontae Ingram, he's, he's coming back into this game, but he, he doesn't look to be the same runner as he did before he got that stinger. Johnson's looked outstanding. On the ground, Roshan Johnson, just shy of midfield. It's a gain of three, but it's second down and seven. Right, there's a great battle going on in the middle of the field between Zach Shackelford and Darius Stills. Stills has made a bunch of plays in this game, and Shackelford's not happy about it. <laughs> I was just watching that. <laughs> Stills is tough to move, man. Which one? 56. <laughs> Darius. Darius. Dante would like a word with you, McShay. <laughs> I'd like to move you around a little bit on the sideline there. Ingram, nothing doing. The loss of one, and it is Darius Stills. I mean, right on cue. Stills, we met with him yesterday, and he is a fiery individual, very smart, studious. He studies the game, but there's no replacing that physical presence in the middle. With Molly McGrath, Todd McShay, Brian Greasy, I'm Steve Levy here in Morgantown as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive. Game of the week. Welcome to
into the fourth quarter of a four-point game. Texas football at their own 48. And they open up quarter four with a third and eight. Good protection. Ellinger has time. And Brandon Eagles had it, and then he didn't. Fourth down. What a great throw there by Ellinger. He, he went through his progressions. He waited. He trusted his protection and put the ball exactly where he needed it to go. And Brandon Eagles just couldn't haul it in. That, that's unfortunate. When you do everything right and give your receiver an opportunity to make that play and a key first down, it just doesn't work out. Ryan Buczewski is back to put it away. Got a little pressure. Sinkfield will let it bounce. And he'll be down about the eight-yard line. Opportunity for Austin Kendall now, but he's going to have to do it without his top player, his top receiver, and Sam James walking back into the locker room. It looked like on that last third down attempt, uh, he caught a shallow cross and went down hard, and the side of his head hits the ground. Right there. Deshaun Jamison on top of him. Jamison on James. Down to Molly. Well, Steve, Sam James underwent concussion protocol. Medical training staff told me he is out for the game with a head injury. West Virginia trailing by four. Letty Brown is going the wrong way. Led by Delhi, a day away. It's a loss of three on the play. I don't think they're going to be able to get back into this game trying to run the football. They come into the game 117th in the country rushing the football. Really, I know you lost your best wide receiver, but Austin Kendall's going to have to throw the football. Second and 13 from his own end zone. It's Brown out across the 10. And if he could have stayed on his feet, would have been a lot of green there. It's a gain of 12 on the play. Short of the first down marker. It is third down. And Priest, that Texas pass defense came in ranked 124th in the country. That's out of 130 schools. That's that's hard to believe. Well, that's what LSU and Joe Burrow do to you. And then playing Oklahoma State, State yeah. and Sanders. But somebody has to step up for West Virginia at the receiver spot. TJ Simmons has the most experience, but really Sean Ryan, Winston Wright. One of these guys has to step up in the absence of James. Interesting play call on third and one. Some late pressure. Ball batted up in the air and intercepted. Intercepted. B.J. Foster. And Austin Kendall has thrown his third pick of the afternoon. Great play by Foster. He's had an up and down day. He gave up the first touchdown pass. Then he had a potential targeting. He almost knocked himself out of the game. He was in the injury tent for about a half an hour. And now he's playing in the second half. Makes an unbelievable interception. Great play by Foster. That's a full afternoon. Now we've still got a whole fourth quarter here. And what's Kendall saying with that reaction? Expressing disappointment? Or is that a misplay by his receiver? He's got well, to understand that you can't throw a hitch route against man, tight man-to-man -man coverage. It's going to be a tip ball. That's a misread from Kendall. Chance for Texas to cash in as they start inside the 20 in West Virginia. Some pressure. Ellinger hit as he throws. It is caught. Duvernay. No, it's not. He had it, and then he couldn't hang on. Incomplete pass. Tyke Smith, who got the start in place of Giovanni Stewart, makes the play. Wow, an unbelievable throw again by Ellinger. Puts it right where it needs to be. And the, the true freshman, Tyke Smith, with a great job. If he doesn't get that arm in there, that's a touchdown. That's one of those where you read the receiver's eyes at the last second. He had no idea that ball was coming in until he saw his eyes get wide. Second and ten. Ellinger all of a sudden is 0 for his last five. Put it on the ground. And Johnson lowers the shoulder, fights for five. Josh Norwood to stop. Ever since we put up those Heisman comparisons on Ellinger, Jinx, he hasn't hit a single pass. Now this, this is his down. Third down, he has been better than any quarterback in the country this season outside of maybe Justin Fields. But, but this is his down because he will go through his reach. You can't blitz him because if you don't get him on the ground, there's nobody left for him running with his legs. 
Big play on third and five. Gonna hand the ball off. Johnson. Duvernay, I beg your pardon, in for the touchdown. He handed it off to the wide receiver, Devin Duvernay, for the 13-yard touchdown. Big-time play for Texas. Thinking the creativity that Tim Beck has to have, right? He didn't know Keontae Ingram was going to go out of this football game. He didn't know he was going to have to use Roshan Johnson primarily. And to give him a change of pace, you bring Devin Duvernay into the backfield in what looked like a two-halfback set, and they score the touchdown. Extra point is good. Second touchdown of the game for Texas. Immediately coming off the interception thrown by Austin Kendall. 11-point lead for the Longhorns here in the fourth. ESPN 2, Steve. Cassidy, thank you. I like that Denzel Mims. Saw him last week. Yeah. He's a heck of a receiver. Two undefeated teams in the Big 12. Oklahoma and Baylor trying to stay that way. You know, the difference between winning and losing a lot of times comes down to the red zone. And Texas has been one of the best in the country. You see the first four games almost perfect scoring touchdowns down there. And I think this comes back to balance, right? Being able to throw the football and run it. And the X factor for Tom Herman is Sam Ellinger and his legs. He has a rushing touchdown today. Duvernay with a rushing touchdown. And then two passing touchdowns. That is a recipe to win football games, to be efficient in the red zone. Duvernay got his first career rushing touchdown on his fifth career rushing attempt snuck him into the backfield and it worked out that's Sean Ryan making the grab Anthony Cook the stop that's a gain of 13 we'll see what life is left in this West Virginia offense with Austin Kendall carrying those three interceptions around his neck for now first down and 10 trying to zip one there's pick number four to Sean Jameson This afternoon nearly took it to the house now, no Jalen Green no problem Sean Jameson he's been reading these out routes they've been throwing a lot of quick routes out here and Jameson just reads the ball perfectly out of the hand you know Jameson played well against the Oklahoma State he moved from wide receiver in the spring so you know he's got good hands and he just treated that like a wide receiver jumped underneath for the fourth interception that's a good sign for for Texas because you know you know who's coming to town next week in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl there's gonna be a lot of passes thrown in that game and so to have some confidence for your young secondary and Jamison in particular as a true sophomore that will go a long way in helping him next week Jamison has two of the four interceptions his first two picks of the season and the inability for West Virginia to run the football and all the pressure on Austin Kendall has finally come crashing down back to back the series throwing interceptions and forcing the football and but he really hasn't had a whole lot of help around him today Texas can pretty much play this the way they want to I handed it off to Roshan Johnson staying on his feet to gain of 11 on first down got a good block from the left tackle Cosby Good stick by Akeem Bailey, gain of four on the play. Of all the attributes of Sam Ellinger we have discussed, should be pointed out, he's been playing in some pain as well. Documented, got a rib injury, dating back to just for the LSU game, and didn't do much during the bye week. So they practiced on Tuesday and Wednesday, but he didn't do much throwing. I'd be surprised if he runs with the football the rest of the way here. Out to the flat for Jake Smith. A bit of a stiff arm and a first down. 
Up 11 with 11 minutes to go in the fourth. I think that's Jake Smith's first grab in this game, but uh, he has been a, a, a real good find for this Texas offense. Got a lot of speed. Gatorade National Player of the Year. He's playing that slot position behind Duvernay, but he brings a different element to this offense that uh, I think he's going to continue to grow in and be a weapon for Sam Ellinger. Ellinger rolling to his right with Johnson. The big rolls man. it back to the big fella. <laughs> Down the sideline. Samuel Cosme, the left tackle. Why wouldn't he? The sophomore from Perth perfect. From Humble, Texas. Goes into the end zone and celebrates the touchdown. Just meant to be. 6'7", <laughs> 300 pounds, and we know he's an athlete, but we don't know he's that good of an athlete, but Cosme, with the play of his career so far, you dream about that, right? Growing up, give me an opportunity. Got to catch the ball first, too. Does that. He's good. And fleet of foot as well. Oh, man. Give, give, yeah, look at him. how happy he is, right? You work on that all offseason, all week, and when you call it, your, your palms get sweaty, and here it comes. Now, Now, how would you like to tackle that guy at the goal line? Oh, my goodness. That was stills. College football on ABC is brought to you by Pacific Life. 150 years strong. Protection and retirement solutions for your future. The all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. And Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Smart call, I think, by Tom Herman. What you do right there, Grease, is you give Lincoln Riley something else to look at on film. <laughs> He'll be working all week on that play using valuable preparation time. And there's the other side of the fun game. That right? was a huge collision. I mean, you got a nose guard and a left tackle coming full speed at each other at the goal line. Give still some credit. He has not given up on him there. Yeah. Take a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. All about the quarterbacks. And now look, you throw four intercept. If you throw four interceptions against anyone, you're gonna lose that football game. Yeah, yeah not all in trouble. Not all those have been on him, but but most of them have been. And there's one tip ball that there ain't nothing he can do about it. But you know, you got to give credit to Texas defensively too, because they have made the, the tight plays. They've they've tipped the ball. Jamison has, right. made, has made the play, and and the weakness of of Texas coming in was their secondary. So you got to give them credit. Yeah, the the interceptions have been very athletic plays by Texas. Down to Molly. Steve Austin Kendall told me he's extremely hard on himself, and coaches said he struggles with his confidence when faced with adversity, and it looks like he's spiraling with those four interceptions, and Texas players know it. They're telling each other, we've got this. We're in his head. You want to get him out of there? You want to get him out of this game? No, 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 no. He needs all the snaps he can get. He hadn't played football. In it. This is good for him. Yeah, this is good. Second down and nine, T.J. Simmons. Across midfield. Texas has scored now 35 or more points in five consecutive games. That's the first time we've done that for the Longhorns since 2012. And our old pal Mac Brown is the head coach. Texas. That one's dropped by Petaway. Second attack. Now, to, to Molly's point, you, know, you, you leave Kendall in there you know, so that he can begin to overcome some of this adversity so that you don't you know, have this habit of when things go bad that they go worse. Uh, you got to come back. And Neil Brown, he's, he's trying to build a program here. They, they've ripped this thing down uh, to the studs pretty much, and they've get, got rid of some guys, and, and they need to find character to build around. There is Stills, and Dante Stills, a great start. Uh, he's hoping to find out about Austin Kendall here. Just pet away. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Give him a yard on the play. This was a big recruiting day for West Virginia. It's obviously the biggest game on their schedule. A spectacular day weather-wise. Sold out. Homecoming. Striped the stadium. They had a host of big-time recruits here to watch. And certainly the atmosphere lived up to it. And just team could not 
Well, it was, keep up on the yeah, scoreboard. It, it was it was a heavy ask, a heavy lift to come. And, and, and Texas has more athletes, more players. They're deeper than West Virginia right now. But but Neil Brown's building, and you know when he when he took over the Troy job, they went four and eight. And that was a team that was not very good before he got there. And then the last three years, he was 31 and eight as a head coach. He knows how to rebuild programs, and uh, he'll get this thing turned around for West Virginia. And, the fact that they're three and one right now, I think that's a really good record for this team coming into this game. With Iowa State coming in next Saturday. I don't think you can oversell the difference in talent on this field, too. Well, what West Virginia did getting into the fourth quarter and battling, having a chance to win this game, shows a lot about what they're building here and, and, and how effective they were playing today in, in, in terms of just executing. 21 points for Texas off four West Virginia turnovers. All right, Cassidy. See how Auburn will respond there in the hole in the swamp. On first down and 10, Roshan Johnson pick up five on the play. Under nine to go now in this fourth quarter. Texas opening up things. To the 35 17. Johnson puts him over 100 yards rushing. So a blow will be short of the first down. Kick off your NFL Sunday tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to countdown. This week, our Daniel Jones, Duke Roots, have turned him into the new king of New York. And then close out your day with Boomer and TJ, NFL primetime every Sunday night, only on ESPN+. Plus. To get ESPN+, Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. Talk to Diana Rossini, who has been working very hard on that Daniel Jones piece. But I think everyone, everyone will oh, enjoy yeah. on Sunday NFL Countdown tomorrow I can't, morning. I can't wait to see that. Mm -hmm. You know what McShay's doing? They'll be watching the show from start to finish. <laughs> Third down and one. Ellinger will keep it and have the first down. <laughs> Some of the numbers. What, what did Todd say? Check back into week three or week four? Six, I think. Six? Week eight. Week eight. Oh, no, and I just no, heard no. the producer who said, you're another promo to read. So <laughs> keep it moving. Push. Read the card, Levy. Got it? Look at McShay back there. He's got his bird's eye view. So was, was Coach Herman giving you the hard time or Mel? What? I think he was taking shots at Mel Kuyper and sort of... No, that was me. Oh, it was Bully on you? <laughs> I'm sure. Me and some others. It's tough being at the summit, isn't it, Todd? Hey, they all want a piece here. <laughs> on the ground, Kirk Johnson. I think what Herman said is, you know, listen, I make mistakes in, in recruiting all the time. I got yes. five-star guys that come can't, that don't, can't play. That don't work out, and he was he was identifying with Todd. <laughs> uh, Self-deprecating, he said uh, he talked to a younger player who made a mistake in an earlier game. He said, look, I make five million bucks a year. I make a lot of mistakes, too. Yeah, he was talking to Jake Smith, the, the true freshman who fumbled the punt against Oklahoma State. And at halftime, he's, he said, yeah, you know, don't worry about it, kid. I wasn't going to put Jake's business on the street like that. Yeah, nice job, Chris. Right. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Everybody knows he dropped the punt. <laughs> Buff led to the touchdown, you mean? Yes. On the ground. Brandon Jones had one, too. They had two muff punts. Immediately after. And the punt return game, they're still trying to figure that part out in Texas. But they seem to be clicking pretty good and staring at Oklahoma yep. next Saturday. Any chance we get that game? Could you, could you talk to the executives, see if we can work that into the calendar? No? Love to. Got it? Uh, that's going to be a great game. Yeah. I, I thought it was interesting talking with Tom Herman. I don't know if I believe him or not, but he said this week that you know, he didn't even know who they played next week. Right. Now, now, if he was able to compartmentalize that, that's pretty impressive. Because I know these kids know who they play next week. But they didn't overlook West Virginia. They've taken care of business, and, and now they can look towards that game. And they hope to have Colin Johnson ready for that game. One of the big reasons they kept him out of this one. Misfire to Marcus Washington there. 
on his fourth down. What a great matchup. You got Ellinger against Jalen Hurts. Hurts is playing out of his mind, the best football he's ever played. And then you've got this secondary that's beat up for Texas, but has got a lot of confidence after the way they played today, going against a, a wide receiver core, C.D. Lamb, and, and a deep group of talented athletes. Can't wait to watch that one. Well, it'll be interesting too, Todd. I want to see Alex Grinch, the new defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, and what he cooks up to slow down this offense in Ellinger, because in last year's game, it was back and forth, and they really struggled slowing Ellinger. Fair catch at 26. 40 yard punt. Texas on their way. Skin app, Steve. Cassie, thank you. Justin Fields is thrown for 16 touchdowns and no interceptions this season. That's the kind of ratio you're looking for. West Virginia. Letty Brown out of the backfield. Gain of two on the play. Now for 27, Brandon Jones made the stop. As for J.K. Dobbins, the running back, second in the FBS, 654 rushing yards. Boy, Ryan Day has done an outstanding job. I, I think I think that game, everybody's talking about Ohio State, but I, I'm really interested to see what Brian Lewerke does, the quarterback from Michigan State. He's going to be under a lot of pressure. I think defensively, Michigan State will be up to the task. They're not going to give up 45 points, but can they score enough to stay in that ball game and put some pressure on fields? Plenty of time for Austin Kendall down the middle of the field. It is caught. Sean Ryan. I'd say the coverage was excellent by Anthony Cook. But Ryan able to hang on for 39. Well, without Sam James, Sean Ryan has an opportunity to step up. The transfer, he got a waiver to be eligible immediately to play here as a true sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. He's got good size, 6'3", 200 pounds. He's still down on the field. Lost Sam James earlier. Here's Sean Ryan being helped off the field gingerly. It looked like he came down on that shoulder, and when you come down like that, you worry about the collarbone. Ready Brown pops over a defender and has first down yardage. It's a game of 13. Boy, Letty Brown has, has shown up here in the second half. They really didn't get him involved in, in the game in the first half, but I think he's their most explosive back. You know, they have Kennedy McCoy and Martel Petaway, but, but Letty Brown brings a little bit more explosiveness to this offense. Brown didn't play the first two games of the season. High ankle sprain. Trying to set up the screen to Haskins, the tight end. More on Letty and Todd. It really jumped out on tape. I mean, I, I think they're they're bringing him along, Letty Brown. And obviously with Ken, uh, Kennedy McCoy, you've got a senior who you trust who protects the football and can pass protect. But as the season progresses, I think we're going to see a lot more Letty. T.J. Simmons still on his feet and into the end zone. Touchdown, West Virginia. There is a flag down. Touchdown will stand. Good on Austin Kendall. You know, not, four interceptions, not the way he wanted this game to go, but not giving up here in the fourth quarter. Good route, good effort by Simmons. Gets into the end zone. Evan Staley. Extra point is good. It's an 11 point game with 357 left. I think they have the best hats or lids in the country. This is, here. Not, this is not the state you want to be a rodent in. <laughs> Aren't you still there? Is that a cap? <laughs> That's not a cap, no. Did I miss the John Denver song already? They play that while we were in break? Pay attention, will you? 
I know. started playing Take Me Home Country Roads on uh, the day this stadium was dedicated back in 1980. And John Denver himself actually made the appearance. And the fans have been singing that song every home game since 1972. Let's see we get the onside kick in an 11-point game. Four minutes to play, and there it is. And the hands team in for Texas. That's Jordan Pouncey who pounced off the ball. We were told that that would be the only way that Colin Johnson could get into the game, being a hands situation like that for Texas. But up 11, 3.56 to go. Yeah, Colin Johnson. Deal with that hamstring. Should be ready to go next week. I know it doesn't matter now. But why not go for two if you're up West Virginia? Yeah. yeah. They get a 10 point. They get 10 points. Yeah. If you're going to kick an outside kick. Anyway, I can think of a lot of people around America that'd be very pleased if they would have gone for a <laughs> two point conversion. And, and a lot of people would be very <laughs> upset about it. Feel free to add. It wasn't, wasn't where I was going, Levy, but at Todd McShane. Very good point. <laughs> Who's delaying this game? We've got Michigan State and Ohio State coming up on ABC. There's Roshan Johnson out across midfield. And now some flags come in. Yeah, you're gonna get a, some frustration. Punch and throw, maybe a punch, yeah. Josh Chandler. Yeah, he got into it. Looked like it was Shackelford, the center. And you just got to keep your keep your cool. Chandler's one of the better defenders on this defense and a piece that they're going to build around just a true sophomore. And they're always going to catch the second guy. Time out. Call by Whistler. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 35 of the defense, 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run, automatic first down. That's number but not an ejection. Yeah, I'm shocked there's not an ejection because he clearly threw a punch. We'll take another look at this. There is, there's That's more the of a shove. And then, well, that, that was the second one. There was a punch thrown. He, that was the second time he hit him. Yeah, you can see he, he's got his head on, you know, Chandler's having that conversation with Neil Brown. And, and he's saying, we'll talk about this later. Right. Not now. A lot of learning going on in Morgantown with this, with this team. A lot of growing happening. There's a lot of change, certainly, coming from Neil Brown. And he needs guys like Chandler to be on the same page. Johnson, the ball carrier for a yard. Tonight on ESPN, after Washington Stanford, it's Sports Center. Stan Verrett, Linda Cohn, break down the big college football Saturday. Herbie will join them as always. Don't forget our playoff baseball. How the Astros and the Yankees flex their muscle. And then UFC 243, some post-fight coverage. Sports Center tonight on ESPN. Linda and Stan from Los Angeles, and streaming live on the ESPN app. You look at the yardage, it's virtually even. It's the turnovers that tell the story in this game. Well, I think when, when West Virginia watches the tape, they're going to see that they competed with Texas for three quarters. And then in the fourth quarter, you know, a couple of, of bad possessions, interceptions thrown by Austin Kendall really broke this thing open. But there's a lot they can learn, obviously, and build from. Uh, but this is a this is an inexperienced team that's trying to implement a, a system and a program that Neil Brown is bringing to Morgantown. No quit, no give up in this West Virginia squad. They already spent the one timeout, and they'll spend another timeout there. the The game began so well for West Virginia. Place was packed, rocking. Opening drive, march down the football field, score touchdown, have a 7-0 lead. And
So they've got things to figure out still. We knew there would be growing pains yeah. here. And then there's and then there's Texas, who has been very impressive on the road, taking advantage of those turnovers. And all signs pointing to Oklahoma and maybe much more for this Texas team. Yeah, I think. It's set up for them, Greece. Yeah, no, certainly, you know, they can still get in the playoff, that's right? I mean. They would have to beat Oklahoma twice, and that's a big if, okay? Uh, but but certainly, I think what they're going to take away from this game is their, their secondary, which came into the game, was the big question, and they've been, they've been injured, and next week they're going to be put to the test. Uh, but they were up to the task today. Austin Kendall can throw the football. West Virginia wants to throw the football. Four interceptions from that secondary. They were playmaking. They were confident. And that's something that I think Tom Herman and Tyler Lambert are going to be, feel good about. Get Texas hoping to get green. And overshone and Stearns all back at some point, maybe in a couple of weeks. Sam Ellinger's not done yet. He will gallop into the end zone for another Texas touchdown. <laughs> you think Tom Herman doesn't remember last year losing to this team? They've thrown a touchdown to the left tackle. <laughs> and right. now, now they're pouring a little salt in the wound with Ellinger right up the middle for another touchdown. Two touchdown passes by Ellinger. Two touchdown runs by Ellinger. And Texas is on their way. Up 42 to 24. 3.03 left. Get you into the pro game. Sunday NFL countdown to more than on Monday night football. The schedule finally deals us an ace. The Browns and 49ers, Jimmy G, and the undefeated Niners host Baker Mayfield, the Browns. That should be a dandy. 8 Eastern, ESPN, and the ESPN app. Garoppolo's been terrific. We actually Boy. saw San Francisco in the preseason, yeah. right? And with Jimmy G, got off to a sluggish start, but but he's, they've been great, and the defense has been really good for the 49ers. Well, too. well we, went, we went to practice uh, between the Broncos and 49ers and, and uh, talking with Kyle Shanahan and watching Jimmy Garoppolo. It, it was not a done deal that Jimmy was going to come out and play well. Right. Like he, he had some issues. Remember the five interceptions in a row practice? Right. That, apparently that's hard to do in practice, right? <laughs> Jeez. But certainly he's he's found a rhythm. Kyle Shanahan has found a rhythm calling plays for him, and that'll be a fun game to watch. And everybody wants to see the Browns play, right? America's darlings, America's sweethearts, Cleveland Browns. That'll be a lot of fun on Monday night. Joe Tess, Booger, Lisa, Kennedy McCoy out to the 20-yard line. West Virginia still has one timeout left, and in case you weren't sure, Texas travels pretty well. You don't think they're local, those guys? I don't see any rodents on there. Oh, <laughs> that would be a giveaway. Yeah, all, just about all that. Uh, you know what? There's, I would say there's a lot of gold still in the stadium. And in one section, a lot of burnt orange. Flip. TJ Simmons has the first down. And then he is rocked down. Jacoby Jones able to bring him down. Under three to go. Kendall picked off four times. He'll run with this one. Get the first down and scoot out of bounds. I'll tell you, you got to... Uh... No reserves in the secondary for Texas because everybody's been hurt. So the guys that started the game are pretty much the guys that they're still out there. No break for them. Here's Letty Brown on the draw play across midfield. Scamper out of bounds. Thank our producer Bill Palladino, producer Josh Hoffman, director Mike Schwab, and our outstanding crew. It's kind of a vacation for our crew this week after dealing with 95 degree temperature yeah. last week in Baco. This is a in Waco. This is a postcard. <laughs>
The kind of day here in Morgantown. I think you're right. It's Baco. <laughs> it's a little warm. <laughs> McShay, was it warm on the field last yeah, week? I was going to say, who's dealing with it? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Greasy got a sweater on. It was so cold in the two, booth. You had two air conditioners on you. <laughs> At all times. <laughs> oh. The college football season marches on. It's a uh, tough, uh, tough month coming up for Neil Brown. His schedule in the Big 12. He plays the big boys: Texas, Oklahoma, and Iowa State next week. Here's Kendall. Skips one to Letty Brown. And Iowa State's a couple plays away from being undefeated. How about Baylor, Todd? I mean, I that, that game all of a sudden is not uh, not an easy easy one. Give Matt Rule a lot of credit. From where that program came from to now yes. in his third year with what they're doing, it, that's impressive. Going on the road today against Kansas State, the big win. And as for Texas, today the Longhorns' first trip out of the state of Texas. The only other time that Texas will leave the state is November 16th when they face Iowa State. All the comforts at home. Kendall slides down and the board's taking a big hit. This is the first true road game for the Longhorns. They did play at Rice, sort of, playing at NRG Stadium in Houston. They have 50,000 Texas fans there for that one, too. Well, and the reason I think that they're still in it, uh, in, the, in the playoff conversation, is does that loss to, to LSU in the way that they lost certainly is not going to hurt them. If they're able to beat Oklahoma, and I think they're right back in. Bryce Wheaton brought that one down. The redshirt freshman gained a 31. Mountaineers chance to make this more respectable on the scoreboard. Kendall to the end zone. McCoy got twisted around. Everything happens to Texas in the rankings based on this they crack the top ten here? Yeah, well, I think they're a top ten team right now. I mean, if, if it were me, I'd have them in the top ten. Um, so, yeah, I think they are. Uh, you can't pen penalize them for that game against LSU, I think. Uh, but it really, really doesn't matter. I mean, all that really matters is next week and the way that they play in the Cotton Bowl against uh, Oklahoma. short for Winston Wright getting some reps for some of the younger Mountaineers he's a true freshman from Pooler Georgia 61 seconds left third and ten yeah they really tried to bolster this this receiving core with the losses of Jennings and Sills and Wesco uh, they really needed to supplement so they got two transfers that came in Sean Ryan's a transfer and George Campbell and then they've got two true freshmen as you mentioned and Wright and Jennings so Everybody outside of James and Simmons is really new. Good protection for Kendall. Incomplete down at the one yard line. Ali Jennings did not haul it in. Another true freshman with Richmond, Virginia. Four down territory. In case you were wondering. What now, Lee? Okay. The previous play is under review. It's important to a lot of people, oh. remember? <laughs> Are we at that point again? <laughs> Molly, talk to somebody down there, will you? <laughs> I'll do what I can. Oh, Molly is here. <laughs> uh, okay, let's take a look. Oh, man, how did that not hit the ref? That's a nice old lay there by the umpire. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell there. No, not from that replay. Well, he had a good look at it. He was right there. Look at him. He's emphatic. It's like counting you out on the mat yeah. boxing. How are you going to question that? How emphatic he was there. He 
is that umpire? I'm working on it. All Give right. me a second. That's Michael Cooper, of course. All right. Good nice, job, Coop. Yeah, nice move, Coop. And then get your eyes on the ball, see it on the ground, and then come in with the very emphatic. No. He makes the move like McShea makes in his commercial. <laughs> oh, there's that the little sidestep. Yeah, there it is. That's incomplete. Yep. Don't mess with Coop. Yeah. He had it all the way. These guys do an unbelievable job, especially the umpire. He's got a lot of things going on, a lot of bodies flying around him. And then to uh, to make that move, to see the ball coming out first and then get out of the way and then turn around and make the call, that is, that's really well done. He's got the sports goggles on, yeah. working. Not going to mess with his eyesight. He's like, I had that the whole way, people. <laughs> Review the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is confirmed. Yeah, you go. Yeah. No kidding. You tell him, Coop. You slam it home. <laughs> go get some. Yeah, Coop, Coop looks like he might have played a little bit. <laughs> Making Michael Cooper a little bit of a TV star on ABC. <laughs> Big hello to all the friends and family watching. You know, they've got feelings too, the stripes. That's there are right. three, three teams out there, Greasy. That's right. They don't play any home games, though. That's the difference. They got families, and they've got feelings, too. 54 seconds left. Bobby, let's wind that clock down there, will you? Back of the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Bryce Wheaton. West Virginia's not done yet. With 48 seconds left. For you, Bryce Wheaton, this redshirt freshman, 6'3, 215 pounds. That's a nice throw from Austin Kendall. And they're they're beating the true freshman, Kenyatta Watson, for Texas. So it's a 12-point game. And Staley is on to attempt the extra point. On the way and good. And the lead is back to 11 by Texas with 48 seconds remaining here in the fourth. The story of the game has been Sam Ellinger. Kind of the same story as we had coming into the game. He has been outstanding here today. Yeah, and he's been solid all season long. Really surveying the field, seeing a lot. A lot more than he did a year ago. Having patience. And then when he absolutely needs to, he still has those tree trunks for legs. And he's made West Virginia pay two times in the red zone two rushing touchdowns playing his best football he's made tremendous strides mechanically from freshman to junior as I imagine most quarterbacks would he turned 21 earlier this week having himself a bit of a party here in Morgantown here today before it. Texas spent a timeout. Mentioned earlier, we thought we might see Colin Johnson only in a hands team kind of situation. But it's a two-score game. Imagine if it was a one-score game, you probably would see the Texas captain, middle of your screen, number nine. Now the bye week helped him, certainly, and then uh, having this this week to kind of work work his way back into practice a little bit. You know, it's, the question will be the game shape, right? You know, you won't be able to play him the entire game next week in Dallas, but uh, but that hamstring is is going to be good enough for him to go and uh, we'll see if he'll be able to expose that uh, Oklahoma secondary. Well, a crack at this onside kick. Pretty deep. Nobody's home for Texas. That was a dump and chase, wasn't it? Pretty good. <laughs> Get Melrose on <laughs> inside the 15-yard line. Duvernay was back to recover it. No icing. Good. Very good. Wow, really empty, <laughs> the, empty in the bucket here, are we? 47 seconds left. 
I'm going to give Roshan Johnson maybe a snap. You know, he's played so well at running back. You're not going to redshirt him this year. Not in game number five. <laughs> West Virginia can still stop the clock one more time. Let's see if they do it. Ellinger will take a knee. Ellinger takes a knee. And West Virginia will not stop the clock. One more snap. We get you ready for Michigan State and Ohio State. And that should take care of things. It's going to do it for us. For Molly McGrath, Todd McShay, Brian Greasy, and our entire crew. I'm Steve Levy. That's the story. Texas comes here and knocks off West Virginia 42 to 31. Send you back to the studio. Kevin Nagandi, Jonathan Vilma, and Mark Sanchez. It's all yours. Good evening from Morgantown, West Virginia.